<sighs> and relax. Oh. Hello and welcome to Let Me Bore You to Sleep. This is uh, Jason Newland with Vinny, my sidekick. Please only listen when you can say <laughs> safely close your eyes. Vinny is hunting a fly right now. So you're going to hear him jumping around. The only way I can avoid it is if I actually kick him into the bedroom. But it seems a shame to take away his fun. He never catches a fly, but it gives him hours of entertainment. And it is quite funny to watch as well. Um, so yeah, this, okay, let's, I'm, I'm going to actually do a proper jingle one day, but this is Trivia, Trivia, Trivia Tuesday, what are you barking for now? Don't bark, mate, don't bark, no, you bark, and I am going to get so cross, so cross, I'll tell you what I'm going to do, I'm going to get this ready to Okay, right, no barking. Are you going to bark? No? No. See, now I don't know if he's looking for the fly or he's moving his head from side to side because he's trying to listen to what's going on downstairs. Maybe a little bit of both. Because he, he's in love with the girl that lives downstairs. Absolutely obsessed with her. <laughs> so he's always listening. I can't really hear anything going down on down there, but he can. And he's listening all oh, she's moving around. He barks when she comes in the front door. She goes in the garden. I'll have a drink of water. Oh, that's better. <laughs> so this is Trivia Tuesday. And What was before I re re before I start? What do I need to tell you? Oh, I have a YouTube channel, Jason Newland. Uh, every time I create a new recording, I upload a video version, ten hours without music, and it's most of those ten hours is a black screen, ten seconds of an image. That's it. I do that every time I make a, a, a new recording. And also on the podcast, every time I do a re new recording, I do six versions. One without music, five hours and ten hours without music, one with music, and then five and ten hours with music. Just gives you a choice. A choice to choose from. Yeah. And I also have a Facebook group called Jason Newland's Boring Group which you can join if you wanna. And it gives you an opportunity to ask questions for Q&A Friday. That's one of the benefits. I can't think of any other <laughs> benefits, but yeah, you, know, you get to join a groovy, groovy club. Oh, did you nearly catch it? He's gonna annoy me, I think, today. You haven't even eaten your dinner yet, Vinny. You know, perhaps if if you if you eated your dinner up, you wouldn't be so hungry for a fly. Just perhaps, 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 perhaps. So, that's all the information I think I've got to talk about. Oops, just reset my timer. I like to try and keep track of how long I've been splodging on for. So today's recording, I have had the help from. Chat GPT 01 preview. So that's their latest. I don't know if it's their latest, but I think it's their latest uh, upload. So I, you know, I, I, I couldn't think of what, what could I do? What kind of uh, trivia should I focus on? So what I've done is I've focused on funny or unusual laws from around the world. Um, so I've asked 
chat GPT. I'm sorry if that noise of him jumping around is annoying you, then just switch off, I'd say, because I think he's going to do it all the way through. Not for all 10 hours, but just for the duration of me talking and then or <laughs> skip through an hour or something and then you can listen to me doing body scans and counting down and stuff like that which is what I do at the end uh, okay I've asked ChatGPT to come up with uh, unusual or funny laws I've also asked it to, to fact check but what it's come up with is said um, I fact check them to the best of my ability up to my knowledge cut off in September 2021 which I still found a, find a bit strange because you can actually search the internet so that's a bit weird uh, please note that while some of these laws were or are officially on the books others may be outdated, repealed or urban legends so this isn't really I guess if you're about to take your law exam don't don't use this as revision <laughs> that's pretty much what I'm saying yeah it's strange because you can actually ask chat GPT about the news and it will tell you what's in the news today so it can search the internet it's just for this particular thing I guess it hasn't searched the internet well not the up to date internet just it's basic back catalog of stuff that it's trained on which is the whole of the internet up to 2021 September with still quite a lot of stuff I wouldn't want to have to read it all in a day would you here's a weird thing not really related to this Vinny we, we was in a park yesterday and he started running or pulling he started pulling so I kind of I just jogged behind him and he, he built up his speed and he's running and I'm running behind him the whole length of the park running fairly quick the only thing I was concentrating on was well first of all like not collapsing that was the first kind of thing well, okay got to be careful there but the other thing is not falling over because I'm not used to running and the you know, I have to kind of like lean back a little bit rather than lean too forward so I've caught, caught out before and gone over so the th two things I noticed first of all my feet were really heavy on the ground which I don't remember being that heavy I'm sure I used to be quite light footed but I used to weigh less but even I mean it's been a while since I ran the other thing is I wasn't out of breath and I ran I'm going to say pretty much full pelt uh, maybe not full pelt but kind of uh, uh, yeah I reckon about the speed I would run if the bus was pulling up and I had to run for the bus but any time I've run for the bus in the last 10 years I've been sitting on the bus like <sighs> like really there was no, none of that completely normal breathing after doing I don't know it's probably 100 100 metres probably something like that I was like wow it wasn't full on running I'm just gonna I don't want to pretend it was full on running but it was full on running <laughs> mind you compared to my walking speed full on running would be just walking normal speed because I am a very slow walker but I do that on purpose because I do like meditation walking walking meditation I like to walk slowly, feel my feet on the ground, feel my body. That's my excuse for walking slowly. And also, kind of in the winter, I like to keep myself on my feet. So I like, you know, take notice of the ground and 
so I don't, you know, slip on anything and that, but... And also, when I'm out with him, I have to check for dog poo. Because, you know, not everyone clears it up, so I don't want to... don't want to stand in it, really. No, I have to check on dog poo so that I can stand in it. No. So, yeah, I was, I was kind of surprised... So maybe that little bit of weight loss, losing a stone or whatever, stone and a half, stone, I don't know, over a stone, has actually had a little bit of benefit to my cardiovascular system, which I didn't really feel it before. I didn't, I've not felt that. Until I ran it and I thought, oh, I was a little bit dubious as to even testing it out, to be fair. I wasn't sure. I mean, last time, when I went to the doctors, which was 12th of last month, 12th of September, I just I remember the date because I called them up because I wanted a bus pass. Uh, letter and they didn't do it I kept calling them back they haven't done it yet and they were saying when did you ask for it and I looked because I still got the thing on my wall or on my door the appointment and yeah blimey it was the 12th of September so it had been a month at that point so and oh anyway the bus was coming because I'd wait for ages for this bus and it didn't turn up. So I go around the corner to where there's more chance, more chance of catching a bus because more than one bus going past. And just as I get to there, cross the road, the bus pulls up. But it's probably I not not far at all, really. Really, it's probably one, two, three, four, five maybe five or six houses down so it wasn't a big a big distance maybe five houses down and a bus had stopped and people were getting off and I thought I'm not running I'm not just yeah, I'm not test. I'm not, not chancing it it might be because the doctor or the nurse rather just told me that I had my heart was 62 years old compared to being 54 so I didn't you know that I probably didn't feel so confident within my ability to run for a bus because I, I guess there's has, there needs to be a cut off point where you just don't run for a bus anymore there never was with my nan my nan would run for a bus when she was in her 80s but my nan was probably fitter when she was in her 80s than I am now and you might think yeah yeah sure well, hey, you know what she used to do 100 lengths of the swimming pool now, I don't know if it's true. She, I mean, she lied to me about a lot of things. <laughs> I don't This is what she said. She did 100 lengths. She was a really good swimmer. And she did that for decades. She'd go twice a week to the local swim baths with her friend or my aunt. It was her... It was my granddad's sister. But then she used to go with her friend as well after when she passed away. And not when my nan passed away because she couldn't go with anyone. But she used to do a hundred lengths. The only reason I remember it is because she kept telling me. She said, oh, you should get down to the swimming pool and do some lengths. I said, I can't swim. She used to find, she's like, oh, you can though, can't you? I said, no, not really. The thing is, I did have swimming lessons when I was in junior school. And I had months of swimming lessons. I think it was once a week after school for quite a long period. Probably near enough the whole year of term. Whole year of that year. And the, the swimming instructor was brilliant. You know. And I was able to get out of... I was able to be in the water and be relaxed when I had a like armbands you know the stuff the floaty armband things and those little you know those white foam things that you 
you either put under your body or you hold on to those or you can sometimes they're a little bit bigger and you can have them both under the top of your body and be leaning on them like little surfboards kind of but sometimes they were just like a little just a square pad but it, it, they floated see that was fine and you know what if I could get away with turning up at a swimming pool and using one of them you know, for the exercise I mean using one of them don't worry about the armbands but using one of those boards just have it with me all the time and then okay I won't be using my arms but I'll be using my legs and I can do a few lengths and get the exercise in but I would be too embarrassed to do that I said this to Vinny the other day he said too embarrassed what about how you look I said what he said you you got embarrassed about having that board in your hand but surely it should be a big belly you're embarrassed about I tell I don't know why you're so rude to me so I'd also have everyone need, would need to close their eyes when I got in and out of the swimming pool yeah I, it's the weird thing about I even remember this because it's been a long time but I remember this feeling it doesn't matter how um, what my body type was when I went to swimming pool over the years you know I've had lots of different body shapes every time I got out of the swimming pool if I'd actually done some exercise I always felt fit I always felt like my body was tight and my stomach was tight and I was is that kind of until I got into the changing rooms and saw myself in the mirror or when I got out went to leave the place and people handed me photographs Polaroids that they took that's the staff that's a bit rude but yeah I had a little bit of confidence once and it was because of my granddad see it's the whole thing if you see someone that you respect doing something it can have an effect I think I mean I know that's kind of how a lot of how kids learn yes I am studying that and but I saw my granddad and he was swimming out at sea across so he was a fair bit out and he was swimming all the length of the beach pretty much and back and for, I did that one day I, I didn't go out as far as him but for some reason uh, seeing him do it gave me confidence to do it so because I had learned to float so providing this note is not wavy I'm fine I can float I know how to float it's something that you kind of need to learn if you okay Vinny blimey if you can't swim very well then you do need to float you need to be able to learn to float so I did I learned that and it, it, again it's kind of it's the complete opposite to what you to, to what feels natural because you have to just not you have to relax it's the only way to float is to relax and that feels uh, it's, it's weird it's a bit like snowboarding so to go forward you have to lean back but when you go down a mountain you lean backwards and when you want to slow down you kind of lean forward I think it's like something like that and it's almost counterintuitive and so yeah I know how to float oh god he's annoying can you hear him is, this, is it just me that can hear him running around <laughs> Andre used to do exactly the same thing are you the reincarnation of Andre Vinny are you 
You're Andre. You just come back to haunt me. Eh? Hard. He wants to be friends with this dog downstairs. And it's one of these dogs that's growing in front of you. It's like little, but it's getting bigger every day. And it's going to be a big old thing. Absolutely beautiful dog. So cute. So friendly. But very, very energetic. And he can't handle it. Because he wants to just play with Vinny. But because he's twice Vinny's size already. He's jumping all over Vinny. And Vinny don't like it. So it's a... Vin's kind of like growling at him yet he still wants to go and see him so there's no way around this I just have to keep him apart and it's a shame because he's literally downstairs as a friend he could have a, a best friend that lives in the same building another doggy bearing in mind his other best friend um, blimey I've forgotten his name now Logie, blimey, Logie was his best friend, and he was huge, but this dog's going to be even bigger, so it, the thing is with Logie, he wouldn't, he knew that he couldn't mess with Vinny, he knew that he'd, he he, he liked Vinny anyway, he had already met, and for some reason he liked him, but he was only 10 months old, or probably eight months old when he first met him so he's still a puppy really but he he kind of knew that he didn't have a hope because he almost let Vinny bully him a little bit until he moved up here for two months when he lived here for two months Logie started to kind of stamp his authority down and Vinny didn't like that because this is his home but Logie's spent more time here than Vinny has because he's, he's known me for eight, seven years or whatever it was and Vinny would known me at that point for a year not even a year, blimey because I got him in December and then can you hear that? shut up I got him in December and it was in November that Logie moved up here so there's another dog shouting outside oh I trimmed my beard today when am I going to get on with the trivia ok blimey wow what am I supposed to just get on with it do you know what years ago no get on with the trivia don't hear about it. years ago is going to lead up to some other long winded story about nothing wow that's a bit rude you're rude I think um Yeah, I used to get these people used to moan when I, you know, doing a hypnosis recording and I'd chat. I'm a little, I guess some would summon a bit of a chatterbox, maybe. Some, some may say that I don't get to the point quickly. And I would get complaints. You know, Can you just do the hypnosis recording? But you know what? If I do that, I don't enjoy it. If I can't be myself, I don't want to be anything. Sounds like it's a weird thing to say. And that's, I think, what I realise I struggle with some people in my life because I can't be myself. And I've spent years, decades, trying to fit in with someone else's perspective of how I am instead of just being myself I ain't want to I don't want to tiptoe around anybody I just want to be me and hopefully that's enough uh, so this is I mean we've already lost someone from the group today so I think maybe someone's upset <laughs> they've left they've left the group um, or they get they left Facebook or being banned from Facebook, I don't know. So yeah, getting to the point. No, nope, sorry. Maybe uh, anyone who's listening to this can just let everybody know, especially if you're on YouTube or something, what time the actual recording starts. 
I know people do that on YouTube sometimes. <sighs> right, so <clears throat> weird and wacky laws from around the world. So we're gonna start off with Italy. Remember these may not be true, but I have fact checked them, but still they might not be they might not be true. Okay. But hopefully they are, or I don't know, they might not be. So number one, Italy. Men may not wear skirts in public. Okay, that doesn't sound like it's uh, true at all, does it? Explanation, no national law prohibits this. Why are you saying it then? Any such restriction would likely be a local ordinance and enforcement is doubtful. So it's more uh, a social thing than a legal thing. Okay. I mean, the same would have been here. There was a time back in, not that long ago in this country, where a man would not, the only time a man could really wear a dress was either if they were in pantomime, or in a play where they were playing a woman or it was a fancy dress or maybe it was their stag night it literally that was the only time unless they were a priest um, and it's back in the days I mean it's yeah it, 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 I don't think I'm not sure if it was like illegal but then not being straight used to be illegal in this country until 1969 or something so ugh, yeah so you know so I'm guessing because of the ignorance of people like oh someone's wearing a dress there it's a question upon their their specification regarding a romantic partner which it isn't I don't think I mean I love wearing dresses I do well no I don't love wearing dresses but when I was at school I did drama on a Friday it was the last it was either the last two sessions or the last three sessions on a Friday and I do drama and I would dress up at any opportunity I would wear dresses I'd always wear makeup even when I didn't need to I remember once I was saying I remember my teacher I could put all my makeup on and, and she said Jason this is a written exam <laughs> you don't need to wear makeup it's like oh, but I want to so I would go home with full makeup on I try and get some of it off, not full makeup, but I try and get some of it off, but it stayed on, so the eyeliner, the lipstick would stay on me. And no one ever gave me any hassle over it. For some reason. I was running out of ways to get people's attention, to be fair. So yeah, I, I like dressing up. I mean, to be, you know, I don't make... I don't make the most attractive man, but oh my goodness, you will never see a worse looking woman than me in the world. Honestly, I was, oh, honestly, I don't, <laughs> I just don't make a particularly attractive human, but put makeup on me and that, it doesn't seem to help. It's weird, because it's supposed to help people, isn't it? I suppose, maybe if I had makeup, like men's makeup, maybe. I don't know. Perhaps if I got famous and I could do all the uh, facial stuff, you know, like get my teeth done, have really big old um, horsey teeth, uh, get a nose job. I mean, that would probably take about three or four surgeons and builders with hammers and scaffolding to to fix that thing 
and then move my eyes further apart, move my eyebrows higher, uh, put in some new hair, remove the hair where it shouldn't be, put hair where it should be, um, probably pin my ears back. Yeah, there's probably a few things I could do. Bleach my skin so it's so I'm. Finny, you're never gonna catch the fly. You ne okay? I shouldn't say that. That's very very negative. But it's true. It's like fly. You can't. You are fast for a little doggy, but a fly is super fast. The other day he was doing it, he said, call me Mr. Miyagi. I said, what? He said, call me Mr. Miyagi. Why am I going to call you Mr. Miyagi, Vinny? Why am I call you that? And he just laughed and walked out and said, call yourself a karate kid fan. I, said, I don't know. Oh! The chopsticks, the chopsticks and the fly, blimey, forgot. Uh, Alaska, okay, USA. It is, is there another Alaska? It is illegal. Is there an Alaska in Canada? Is, I'm just, okay, I'm just bubble shooting this one. Does Alaska reach through Canada and USA? I'm just wondering because it isn't Alaska kind of like the where the ice age was. Where all, isn't that where all the the um, the snow and the icebergs and stuff is? Or have I got it wrong? Anyway, Alaska in the USA, it is illegal to whisper in someone's ear while they are moose hunting. It's illegal to whisper in someone's ear while they are moose hunting. Uh, okay. Explanation to prevent distraction during hunting. Those specific laws may vary. Wow. I mean, I would go even further, say it should be illegal to moose hunt and illegal to whisper in someone's ear separately. But that's just me. I tell you, it's really weird, right? Okay. This isn't probably a... I won't go into details because of the subject matter, but it's kind of... It's along those lines. In this country... Now I know that in other parts of the world, game hunting is a big thing. It can be a big thing. Like... A legitimate sport. A legitimate... You know. And... Here... It's the work of the devil, okay? In this country, we do not like it at all. It's really weird. It's hard to explain. Um, like big game hunting, I'm talking about. Not, I mean, it's it's a weird thing. There was this dentist who, he did some big game hunting and he posted his picture on Facebook and he had to go into hiding. Basically because the newspapers printed his picture. And told everyone where he worked. And he was the most hated man on the planet. Or the most hated man in this country. Until the next person came along. And we don't like that. And it's funny because I see pictures of people putting photographs of them standing over a big prey that they've shot. And I'm thinking, wow. Wow. If I did that in this country, I could become a hate figure. Like literally, I could overnight, I could be, I would, I could be, I have to move from where I live and move somewhere where, you know, where no one knows who I am. Where no one knows your name. It's strange, isn't it? The different laws and the different... It's not even a law thing. It's a, this, 
the different uh, social norms, I guess, what's acceptable and what's not acceptable. Is because this dentist he didn't break any laws at all. He went to another country, possibly South Africa or Africa, somewhere like India maybe, and he didn't break any laws. Everything he did was absolutely legal. And but he yeah. And I, I think yeah, another a woman did it as well, similar kind of thing. I've seen it a few times over the years. This country don't like that, really. It's, and I've seen some people on Facebook standing over their trophy, holding a shotgun and all the family like posing. And I just think, wow. It just shows you how different our countries are. You know, wherever you live, there's, there's certain aspects of our countries that are so different even though we may speak the same language. Of course, we invented the language, but you may speak that language in your country. And, uh, you know, even though we invented all the main things like planes and electricity and all that, but anyway, it doesn't matter. That's not about how brilliant England is. It's <laughs> <laughs> so, you're thinking about it, it's like weird, isn't it? We've got so much in common. And that's what I like to focus on, really. But there's those few little things. And I've noticed that when it comes to religion, we've got, we've got more in common than we have not in common, whatever the, whatever the opposite to being in common is. We've got more in common. Every It doesn't matter what religion people are, what their belief is, we have much more in common as human beings then we do not. Yet, yeah, isn't it fascinating that sometimes we may have a tendency to focus on the things we don't have in common instead of the things that we do? I don't know, just find that quite fascinating. I should study psychology to prevent this. Okay, so the next one is North Carolina, USA. By the way, I don't have an opinion either way on any of the things I say. I do, but I'm not going to tell you. North Carolina, USA. Bingo games cannot last more than five hours. Is this true? Do you live in North Carolina, USA? Bingo games cannot last more than five hours. Five hours. I mean, the first question comes to my mind is why would you want them to? Why would you want a bingo game to last more than five hours? How is it even possible for a bingo game to last more than five hours? It's not like it's a game of Monopoly or a game of poker or something that, or a game of snooker even that could just go on forever and ever and ever if they kept snookering each other. And sometimes in snooker, the referee just says that's enough and just end the game because it's not going anywhere I don't think it happens too often my, my friend downstairs was proper into snooker and he'd tell me these things he'd say like just sometimes they just don't like it you know, if the, ref, the referee or the umpire or whatever they're called in snooker I mean I don't like tennis is another thing that can just go on and on and on I think there should be, like with football, there should be a time, a time limit. There should be a time limit on tennis, there should be a time limit on snooker. And of course, there seems to be a time limit on bingo. How can, a, how can a game last for five hours, though? That don't make sense. It don't make sense to me. It really don't make sense. No... Okay. Uh, da, 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 da. Man, where was it? Okay, right, I'm trying to find it. I'm losing track of where my things are. Okay, five, four. 
What on earth? Um, ba -bum, bum, bum. Right, okay, here we go. Here we go. I've started at the bottom and working my way up. Cannot, okay. It's a bingo games. I'm just trying to think. You read out the thing. It shouldn't take, how can it, it can't physically take five hours for just one bingo game, surely. And how big are the sheets of paper with the numbers on? <sighs> okay, it's intended to prevent excessive gambling. So they're not talking about one bingo game. They're talking about the whole session, I guess. Right. So the next one's Arizona, USA. Cutting down a cactus can result in up to 25 years in prison. I can't imagine why that would be. So let's see what the explanation is for this. The Sanguaro cactus is protected and harming one is a felony. Okay. I don't know what a Sanguaro, a sanguaro cactus is or why it's protected. Um, do they have the police? Do they have the uh, cactus police? protecting the cactuses or the cacti I don't know but I mean, oh, this fly's attacking me now Vinny catch the fly will you that's what you're here for that's why I got you and now I'm going to scratch my nose and my fingers gone into my glasses so there's a big smudge on my glasses now I've never been so angry it's all smudgy So, um, ba -dum, ba -dum. you know, the we had a tree. I think it was in Nottingham. Was it Notting, Nottingham Forest? Nottingham Forest. Nottingham Forest. Or oh, no, it wasn't. It, there was a tree anyway. Apparently, it's a really, really famous tree. And a couple of people came along and cut it down. I don't know if anyone really knows why why they did it let me just check this because this is something that happened um tree cut down i don't know what they, they ended up getting okay the magistrates okay tree cut down Right, I need to find out what the tree was. Right, I'll let me find it. Sycamore Gap Tree. So the Sycamore Gap Tree, that's one that got caught, got shut, got cut down. It was a single sycamore tree growing in a natural dip in the countryside along Hadrian's Wall. The National Trust, which looks after the site with the Northumberland Police Park, or whatever, said it was planted in 1800s. Um, it was a popular space, a popular place to go to, and it became famous after featuring in the 1991 film Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves, starring Robin Hood. It gained the nickname of Robin Hood Tree, although in reality it was 170 miles. 273 kilometers from Sherwood Forest. So, so I'm wondering, okay, the morning of 28th of September, 2023, news spread that the tree had been chopped down overnight. I can't remember, I was just distraught. Uh, one heard saying, in 31 years of forensics, I've never examined a tree. <laughs> <laughs> They said the police examiners, forensic officers from the police. I've never friend, I've never examined a, a tree. Oh wow! Um, on the thirtieth of April, two thousand twenty-four, two men in their thirties from Cumbria which were charged with criminal damage of the tree. Both have denied the charges and trial is expected. 
how on earth do they even how how it was a man in his sixties and a sixteen year old boy okay no it's a favorite notes that was someone else that's not them the topping of this is this country just to give you an idea the toppling of the tree led to an outpouring of anger and astonishment the reason probably is because they kept talking about it on the news like it was an actual story so it's a story for those that live close by that love the tree I don't think it was necessary it's just it's a tree I love trees I'm not against trees I think they're you know, without trees, we wouldn't be here, would we? So trees are quite ha good. I love trees. However, um, I know they saved a few bits of the tree to try and regrow it somewhere. Well, they might, I don't know if they regrew it where it was. But I don't know what happened. Right, there's no other information. Okay, I can't see whether or not they went to prison. How do you prove it? And added on to that, can you imagine being in a prison with some of the people who've done some of the things that they have done to get into prison? Some of the awful things that people do to, to get put in prison. And you get asked, well, why are you in there for? I cut down a tree. It, yeah, it just seems fine them do do something, but don't put them in prison. You know, it just seems a little bit. And you know, I'm I'm on my soapbox now, right? This is outdated. This is this is from the summer, so I'm just gonna mention this. People have been put in prison for being part of the demonstrations that led to riots in the summer. And there was this building which had refugees in and it was like a hotel. And the whole thing is that people tried to burn the hotel down. On paper, yeah, that's what happened. And they did set fire to an entrance to the hotel. But, but, and this is a big, big but, there was probably a hundred police, if not more, watching them do it. So no one was going to get hurt. There wasn't an inch of possibility of anyone inside that building getting hurt. Because the police were watching it. They let the people do it. So it's not really the same thing. If a police is watching me do something, then, okay, it's still criminal damage. But if they're literally just going to watch me do it, how much of a crime is what I'm doing? Is I know it's in a kind of logical way. Maybe it's illogical to think that way, but if I say to a police, like there's like two police standing next to me, I say, I'm going to break into that car now. And they just stand there and watch me break into the car and then don't arrest me and eventually the police come round and arrest me later on in the day or the next day that, is, that isn't something kind of isn't there a little bit on, on the police that's just like mm, yeah, a little bit maybe that's enough seriousness okay so that's enough about trees in the UK apparently it is illegal <laughs> oh my goodness I can't believe this <sighs> okay are you, are you really are you ready for this are you ready for this every time I move the screen it takes him back to to nothing again oh blimey come on In the UK, it is illegal. Can you guess what I'm going to say next? 
Finney's standing at the door. Just standing, pressed against the door. So I've got the door closed. In the hope that he won't hear the sounds of the hallway and start barking. But Okay. In the UK, it is illegal to die in the House of Parliament. I mean, <laughs> that's the most ridiculous law I think I've ever heard in my entire life. Uh, explanation, common myth, no legal basis found. How can there be a legal basis? What are you going to do to someone if they do? Or are you going to you going to arrest them? Oh, blimey. Oh, that's funny. It can't be true. It's one of those stupid things I think that people come up with and they just pass it on from generation to generation and everyone just believes it. And you f it's a little bit like the... There was... Oh man, there was this like if you two things that I've noticed was like f dripped down from the generation before, yeah, probably the generation before mine, or even the generation before that generation. Those you know those people that are probably in their eighties now. That thing, the amount of people that I met in London who were in the blind beggar. The night that um, the craze came in and did what they did. Like the really famous Blind Beggar incident. That's the name of the pub, by the way, Blind Beggar. So the amount of people that I've actually met during the 90s that told me they were in there that night. So I went into the pub probably about 2005 I thought I'd go in there and have a look because I've never been there before it wasn't it's in um, Whitechapel I think so it's not far from where I used to live but I never used to I probably walked past it before but never been in there so I went in there I thought yeah I'll go in there I remember it because I had diarrhoea so I went in there and I thought I was going to walk into something the size of Wembley Stadium because it'd have to be to fit the amount of people in that I'd heard say that they were in there that night. And they must have been sitting on each other's necks and heads and squashed to the ceiling. Honestly. I mean, there would have been no room for the for the crowd. They, they would have turned up, tried to open the door and not even be able to get in. So that would have never have even happened. The craze wouldn't even have gone to prison because they wouldn't have been able to get inside the pub to do what they did. The other one is, it's a different thing, but it's the Muhammad Ali fight with uh, our, um, our Henry, Henry Cooper. Henry Cooper and his, and his Emma, Henry Zama. So basically, Henry Cooper was our our heavyweight champion back in the 60s and he fought Muhammad Ali twice first when he was Cassius Clay and then he fought him again when Muhammad Ali was the world champion so he fought him before he was world champion and then he fought him I think it was, that was in black and white I think and then he fought him when it was in colour and Muhammad Ali was the champion now Henry Cooper was the first person to knock Ali down or Cassius Clay down as he was at the time first person in his professional career to ever knock him down he didn't stay down but if and, it, and he did it just on the bell so he was saved by the bell if it hadn't been for the bell based on the amount of boxing I've watched and I've watched thousands of fights over the years um, I think most people would, if they watched that would say no that, that would have been the end of it 
it wouldn't have took much to put uh, Ali back down again just because that was probably one of the biggest punches at that time it was the biggest punch he ever took Vinny is really annoying me now he's just jumping around and barking and everything he's losing the plot so what happened if you if I can actually finish this sentence Vinny please he's crawling all over me now he's just looking for this no get off me why don't mind you get up it's, that's it calm down just relax what happened is this he knocked he knocked Ali down with a left hook and Cassius Clay as he was went down what proceeded to happen was that the bell went pretty much straight away he did get up but the bell went and he was saved by the bell but he was wobbly he wobbled back to the to the to the his corner now his trainer apparently I don't know if it's true or not his trainer did say that he ripped Ali's glove um, and there was a few issues about the glove and there is a whole thing and it's I've heard this story told by people that were supposedly watched it and other people that have been told by them people it passed down over generations that the round the 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 minute that it should be between rounds went on for six minutes because Ali's corner were playing around playing for time letting Ali recover and then Ali recovered and came back and ended up stopping um, Henry Cooper although it was on because of cuts old old Henry was susceptible whatever it is to cuts on his eyes that was one of his biggest problems. Had it not been for that, he would have, I would say, be have been world champion. So, I've watched it through quite a few times, and you can see that sometimes it's cuts, and you know, it's it's like it's not always the thing. But I've seen the whole thing, right from the knockdown. until and with a counter on the screen and it goes over by about f seven seconds maybe ten seconds it's practically nothing it's i might be exaggerating it might be a little bit more but it's definitely not six minutes it's things like that just absolute rubbish that get and the thing is i notice that some people they are adamant will you just calm down Finney please mate calm down they're adamant and they will not back down nope I know it's true because my dad told me so that's how you gauge what's true because your dad told you but where did your dad get it from he got it from someone that probably he believes as well so it's not that your dad's lying. I'm not saying your dad's lying. It's just where he got it from could be for someone that he believed, which could maybe it was his dad. And maybe his dad got it from someone who he believed. So no one's really lying. But at the same time, they're not being factual. So the next one is common myth. Uh, okay, Indonesia, Indonesia. The penalty. Okay, no, I'm not going to read this one out. The penalty for mass um, master thing in. Okay, right. Apparently, it's not true. So I will. I'll not read that one out. I would normally, but. It's quite a funny law, but it's not true, apparently. France. It is illegal to carry life... <laughs> oh, this can't be true. It is illegal 
to carry live snails on a high-speed train without a ticket for the snails. <laughs> You're joking. Explanation. Pets under a certain weight can travel free, but large animals require a ticket. I mean, how big is a snail? Are you, I, mean, I know you can get huge snails. There, there are some that are as big as a house. In exaggeration, but there are some big ones. But come on, it, it doesn't take up a whole seat. Blimey! Imagine getting taken to court for not paying a ticket, a ticket fine for a snail. No, next one is Switzerland. You cannot flush the toilet after ten p.m. in an apartment building. Okay, explanation: noise ordinance may discourage it, but it's not a national law. Okay, I can see, I can see the reason in it. For me, the toilet flush isn't the issue. It's those silly lights in people's. I don't know if you have them in your country, but quite often, and I've, I've lived in a lot of different places, so I don't know if this is like a nationwide thing. They have those pool lights in the bathroom, and they click very loudly. And generally, you can hear it if you live above them or below them. You can hear that click, kick, kick. Kick, kick. It's loud in the echoiest room of the house. It just seems as, you'd think there'd be some kind of oh, hello. Hi. It is hi, hi. Hi, hi, it's the Project Hi, No, I was going to try and collect it. I've not. They, they. I did phone up last week, and they said that hadn't that it'd been done, but it's with the reception. Is that right? Yeah, it does look like it's been done. Did they say that you had to pay a fee? Or they, not? they said no, but I had to come and I was going to come and collect it. Is it? Is it? it is it? Is there? Is it just because I was going to come tomorrow and get it? Oh, that's brilliant. I'm going to come in the morning. Is, are, you, are you opening at lunchtime as well, or is it? Yeah, we don't close. Oh, brilliant. Okay, thank you. Bye. Okay, cheers. Bye. bye. Thank you, bye. I just had a phone call from the doctors then, asking me about my bus pass letter, if I'd received it. Huh? Okay. Oh, now it's taking me off the page again. Every time I move this thing, it it takes me off the page. That's so annoying. Uh, uh. Right, where is it? Where is it? Portugal. I'm not getting through these very quickly, am I? Uh, Japan. How many have I done? Place. Likely... Oh, what? I've actually got 200 to get through, and I don't think I've got through many yet so far. I think it's safe to say I've got through eight. Eight out of 200. So, buckle in, ladies and gentlemen. It's going to be a long day. The next one in Australia, it's illegal to name any animal you plan to eat. Oh, wow. Um, it says here, no evidence of such a law, likely a myth. It's, you know, someone phoned the radio up and he was laughing while he was telling this story about it was like a caller in calm down Vinny please and he was talking about how his dad a family pet which was a like a pig or something a piglet or whatever and then they were he was eating his dinner and his parents were laughing because it was his family pet and the radio presenter told this person it's like that's just disgusting 
Why are you phoning up telling us this? This is horrible. And the bloke was laughing on the phone. Like, imagine finding that funny. I was just like, really, that's like, ugh, weird. So, Singapore, Singapore selling non-medical chewing gum is illegal. What? Selling non-medical... Is there such a thing as medical chewing gum? Is there? I didn't know that. So explanation, to maintain public cleanliness, gum sales are restricted. Non-medical. Or would that be what, uh, like stop smoking gum, possibly? I don't know. Norway, you can't sterilise your pet dog or cat. Wow. Explanation. Neutering is regulated to prevent unnecessary procedures. You can't sterilise or your pet, dog or cat. In this country, it's almost encouraged. In some breeds, I think it's even le- like it's the legal o- obligation. So if you've got um, a XL bully, they have to be you know, snipped, if it's a male, have to be snipped by a certain time. So, yeah. But in Norway, you can't. Wow. According to this, whether it's true or not. China, it's illegal to reincarnate without government permission. (laughs) It's illegal to reincarnate without government permission. Um, explanation and regulations targeted in Tibetan Buddhist practices I, c- I can't I've got nothing to say on that that was just real weird Vermont USA women need written permission from their husbands to wear false teeth <laughs> oh, wow it's an old law likely unenforced today I'd like to see them enforce it. Oh, that'd be a court case worth visiting, wouldn't it? Watching. Women needed, they used to need written permission from their husbands to wear false teeth. How backward is that? Blimey. Japan. It's illegal to be overweight. In Japan. It's illegal to be overweight. It's a metabo law. Really? Companies must notify employees' waist sizes. No. Wow. So companies must monitor employees' waist sizes, but individuals aren't penalised. Well, that's not intrusive at all, is it? Blimey. South Korea, traffic officers are required to report all bribes offered by drivers. Does that happen a lot? Anti-corruption measures, failure to report. So failure to report can result in punishment. I mean, surely traffic officers are required to report all bribes offered by drivers. Surely trying to bribe a traffic officer. Are these police officers, traffic police officers or traffic wardens? I'm curious. Because surely if it was a police traffic, if it was someone stopping a car and it was police and so tries to bribe them, they, they should get arrested, shouldn't they? Because it's against the law. But they seem to be focusing on the police getting arrested if they don't tell. Uh, I don't know. Russia. It's illegal to tell children about gay people. No, surely not. Explanation. Laws ban propaganda of non-traditional relationships to minors. I don't know if that's true or not. I don't know. Um, in France, it's illegal to name your pig Napoleon. It's an old law, apparently. Disrespecting the emperor was prohibited. <laughs> I mean, that would be the same anywhere in the world in the past. Like, if you go back far enough. Can you imagine, if you just... If you... I'm trying to think. Seriously, mate, can you just calm down? Do you imagine, like, you know, 
you got a pig or you got a and you just like during the Roman days and someone says oh it's, it's my pet you can't eat him it's my pet oh what's his name Caesar and maybe Caesar I'm guessing he had a little bit of an ego a little bit of uh, something about him a little bit of like self importance going on there uh, possibly wouldn't like it I mean it wouldn't have to be entrenched in law in order to know that you perhaps you shouldn't call a pig and pigs have never really had good press let's face it I mean look look at how many religions won't even eat pigs or pork rather because they're dirty animals show me a clean one so okay UK it's illegal to handle salmon in sus- <laughs> it's a, it's illegal to ha- handle salmon in suspicious circumstances explanation under the salmon act 1986 to prevent poaching as this, this sounds like funny under uh, oh, under suspicious circumstances Georgia, USA. No eating chicken. Oh, no eating fried chicken with utensils. No eating fried chicken with utensils. So the explanation: This is Georgia, USA. In Gainesville, it's a municipal code meant to promote tourism. I don't know what municipal code means. If I left here to find out. Well, I left this page, I guess I'd get lost again, so I'm not going to. Switzerland. Oh, it still reminds me when I had that dinner, and there was a few of us together, and someone cooked, and it was like, uh, I don't know, chimichonga or something, and it was just all these things with cheese and bis- these taco chips or whatever. So I get a knife and fork and I take a bit off and put it onto a plate, you know, a big, like, chunk. You're not supposed to use a knife and fork, you're supposed to use your finger. It's finger food. He got the right ump because it's finger food. He was in the same category as, what are you putting salt and pepper on the food for? You haven't tasted it yet. Eh. Like, shut up. You cannot hang in Switzerland. You cannot hang clothes outside on Sundays. Wow. Local customs discourage noise and visible labour on Sundays. I agree with that. Have one day where someone's not using power tools. Power tool free Sunday. Wouldn't that be nice? Just to, just to know that you could lie in. I'm not talking about me. I'm talking about people that work hard. I'm talking just about everyone, really. Just, just so you know, you've got one day where you haven't got to listen to a lawnmower at eight in the morning or someone drilling holes into your neighbour's wall, you know, a quarter to nine or just, just to have some peace. Just one day, one day of the week. I'd say both days, both weekend days. But, so, in Singapore, not flushing a public toilet can result in fines. Explanation, strict cleanliness cleanliness laws are, they are enforced. Okay, Italy fines for feeding pigeons in Venice, really? To prevent pollution and protect historic sites. Did you know that they got rid of pigeons out of Trafalgar Square? We were one of the most famous places in the world for pigeons. I mean, obviously Venice is as well. But Trafalgar Square in London. I'm going to search this. So I'm going to go out of there. Uh, Most famous places famous places that have pigeons (laughs) 
most famous places that have pigeons. New York City, there's 400 million pigeons. How do they know? Oh no, there's 400 million pigeons worldwide. So New York City has 1 million pig birds. Okay, so they've got 1 million birds now. And okay, Trafalgar Square pigeons history. Okay, here we go. Pigeons have been a part of Trafalgar Square in London since before the space was finished in 1844. They began to flock to the square before construction was even complete. There used to be feed sellers set up shop in the square selling bird seed to visitors throughout the 19th and 20th century. Popularity. So pigeons are comfortable around people and easy to approach, making Trafalgar Square a popular destination. So people used to come from well I'm not saying people came from all over the world to see the pigeons because they were you know you got your own pigeons probably but it was a tourist attraction to it's one of those must have photo moments where you're standing like a scarecrow with pigeons all over you because they used to just climb all over you and it was Especially if you chuck birdseed over someone. They didn't always appreciate it. but So it's a, it's, a, it's a lovely photograph moment. So it became a very popular pastime for Londoners. The feeding the pigeons. But I think visiting the pigeons became popular for visitors. You know, uh, tourists. So apparently the pigeon problem became... Got got out of hand with an estimated thirty five thousand pigeons descending on the squares during the day. Thirty five thousand pigeon in Trafalgar Square, and it's not that big. I mean, it's a it's a big space, but it's not thirty five thirty five thousand pigeons is too much. How anyone got in there, I don't know. How many humans got in there? So there was a ban on feeding. So in 2003, Ken Livingstone, who was the mayor of London at the time, banned feeding pigeons in Trafalgar Square. And the pe penalty for feeding the pigeons was set at £50. And in 2007, the fine increased to £500. Wow. How ridiculous. And I'm... Okay like temporarily just like don't feed the pigeons just temporarily let them you know move on because they're not going to leave London they're not going to immigrate you know to Australia they're still going to be around and pigeons are quite I mean they're called home pigeons for a reason you know they generally kind of stick to where they live so and if they were just visiting Trafalgar Square then they'd have no reason to visit Trafalgar Square if there was no food. Just the, the hardcore Trafalgar Square fans would go there. So, in December 2002, a hawk named Lemmy was introduced to the square to intimidate the pigeons. The hawk was fed raw chicken scraps so was not meant to kill the pigeons. The, the hawk and his handler were successful in reducing the pigeon population for an average of 2,000 to less than 300. See, that just seems a little bit sad because there's still, you can't stop pigeons from still coming, but you're not allowed to feed the pigeons. Well, you're not, you know, I don't know if it's illegal to feed pigeons. Well, clearly it was, wasn't it? Well, it's like a £50 fine. I don't know what the fine is now for feeding a pigeon, which just seems ridiculous. And then when people say, oh, you shouldn't feed ducks bread, well, tell all the ducks then. 
because they love bread. Tell the ducks. Because the thing is, if you're in a park on your own, feeding the duck bread, do you know why you never get in trouble? Because the ducks don't grass you up, because they love it. Now, if it was horrible and bad for them, surely they would call the duck police and get you, get you arrested. But no, they keep quiet because they love bread. I don't know if it's true. Do you? How did you get rid? Of, how did they get rid of the pigeons? Okay, right. So that's the end of that. Um. In Alabama, USA, it's illegal to wear a fake moustache in church. Okay, I'll, I'll finish this sentence. In Alabama, USA, it's illegal to wear a fake moustache in church if it causes laughter. Wow. Ex explanation aims to maintain decorum during services. Fair enough. Uh, in Thailand, why would someone wear a moustache, a fake moustache? I can understand wearing fake hair for people who've got an issue with not having hair and stuff. I suppose, I don't know, who knows. Thailand, it's illegal to step on the national currency, yes. It's it's not, I don't, yeah, it's not so much stepping on it, but it's disrespecting, I knew about this one disrespecting the king's image which is on a currency is illegal so if for example someone got in trouble they were at the cash point machine getting money out and the money blew because it's really windy the money blew on the ground and which is the natural reaction is to put your foot on it to stop it as i think it's anyone well in the the west anyway i'd say that's their natural reaction Put your foot on to stop it. Because you don't want a £10 or £20 note blowing off. <laughs> I thought it said blowing off. That made me laugh. Because I'm a child. And but that's illegal. Because you're stepping on the image of the king. So, yeah. Uh, also in Thailand, it's, it's illegal to vape in public. Loads of people do it. And the police have a tendency from what I understand of arresting tourists for doing it but not locals because by arresting tourists they can charge the money they arrest the locals they don't get anything so the tourist is just a, a way of making money really but the currency that's that's a serious thing they they take their royal family really seriously. Really seriously. As Denmark, before starting your car, you are legally required to check lights, brakes, steering and horn. Uh, safety regulations encourage to fit. I mean, really? You'd think everyone would do that anyway, wouldn't you? You'd think there'd be a few checks before starting the car, before driving, to make sure that all your wheels are on and just generally making sure that everything's kind of safe I mean I don't know how much but in France kissing on train platforms is banned really? implemented in 1910 to prevent delays rarely enforced now so I guess if you're having a particularly long the thing is nothing pre nothing prevents the trains. There are no delays on trains other than the actual train service. Because they go whether you're ready or not. They just go. The doors lock. The, the the Someone goes across the platform and closes all the doors. At the moment anyway. I don't know. They're probably going to get rid of those people. But the doors lock. You can't get on the train anyway. Or the doors close. Or automatically close. So... The days of like a train driver looking out, looking at back at two romantic couples or, you know, like kissing each other passionately 
I'm going to miss you. I'm going to miss you as well. I'm really going to miss you. I'm going to wish you. I'm going to really miss you more. I'm going to miss you more. Why well, do you have to turn everything into a competition? I'm not. I just, I'm just going to miss you so much. Yeah, you know, you, you said that already. Why do you keep repeating yourself? Why do you keep trying to start an argument? Everything was going so lovely. I know, I know I'm sorry. I just, just gonna, I'm just going to miss you so much. I'm going to miss you more. Oh, okay. I'm going to go now. Oh, don't go. I have to. Look, the train driver is he's getting very angry with me. Oh, it doesn't matter. This is the. This is three hundred years ago. The, the train will wait for as long as we need. This is romantic. This will be in a, a romantic novel one day. Mm. Okay, I'll move on. Um, Oklahoma, USA. Whaling is illegal. What's the noise, isn't it? Is you know, it's. I suppose it's all to do with not wanting to disturb the neighbours and uh, okay oh actually Oklahoma it says landlocked state law is redundant so it isn't Oklahoma wailing oh wailing I thought they meant like <coughs> so Australia it's illegal to disrupt a wedding or funeral Considered a criminal offence under public order laws. Ah, okay. I mean, so what about the bit, do you, any, does anyone have anything to say about this wedding before it goes ahead? You know, that, that little bit of the, the wedding. So someone says, well, actually, they are both my children. <laughs> I'm your, I'm both your parents. So someone does actually say um, something speaks up, then they're breaking the law, are they? Okay. Uh, UK. All men over 14 must practice longbow shooting for two hours a week. Wow. All men over 14, men, imagine in those days, 14 was a man. Um, because in them days men and women people didn't live you know you you can have the luxury of saying oh someone's an adult when they're 18 because because of how long we live back then you didn't you couldn't didn't have the luxury of you know being alive for 70 80 years it was as soon as you pretty much developed and impregnate could get impregnated you was an adult uh, 14 I'd have been no good because I, I didn't become an adult till I was about 36 I think I went through puberty uh, long practice longbow shooting for two hours a week makes sense I must have been pretty good then because if in the age of 14 wow um, so it's an old law from the Middle Ages, not enforced today. Why? The, really? Is it not enforced today? I was going to say, I don't remember doing that in school. Germany. Running out of fuel from the on the autobahn is illegal. It's considered preventable and thus a traffic offence. Um, okay. What about human error with human beings? Human beings make mistakes sometimes I mean it providing it hasn't caused harm to another person and you know the person you know maybe we've learned from it like okay I'll be more careful next time just you know give them a break man Canada Canada it is illegal to pretend to practice witchcraft it is illegal to pretend to practice witchcraft now in the UK you would in the past you wouldn't get many people getting arrested for pretending to be witches <laughs> it was the opposite uh, explanation law appealed in 2018 previously targeted fraudsters you're just pretending uh, number 33 Scotland it's illegal to ride a cow while drunk. <laughs> ride a cow. 
Uh, okay. Explanation. Under the Licensing Act 1872. Fair enough. Next one. California, USA. It's illegal to whistle for a lost canary before 7 a.m. <laughs> oh my goodness. I've never lost a canary. So I do feel, I, I do, you know, feel for the person that has lost their canary and why they would want to whistle to get it. But you're not allowed to do it before 7 a.m. So if you're, if you're going to lose your canary, make sure it's after 7 a.m., I guess. So this is a uh, noise ordinance may apply. Specific law is doubtful. South Africa, it's illegal to purchase a TV without a license. Wow. So explanation, a TV license is required for ownership. Now... That would make sense to do that here. Because then, you know, because they make it so it's almost impossible not to have a, not to pay for a TV license. Although it's about time they got rid of it. Um, Japan, it's illegal to dance in the dark after midnight. What? It's illegal to dance in the dark after midnight. Um, what outside or inside? Law relaxed in 2015. It was to curb unseemly behaviour. Okay. Uh, Milan in Italy. It's a legal. It's a legal requirement to smile at all times, except during funerals or hospital visits. Wow, an old regulate an old regulation promoting cheerfulness not enforced. God, that'd be hard, wouldn't it? Wow. New York, USA. It's illegal to wear slippers after ten p.m. So it says likely a myth, no evidence found. Thirty-nine, Florida, USA. Unmarried women parachuting on Sundays could face fines. <laughs> I'm going to pick this one apart. What? Unmarried women parachuting on Sundays. That's like three different things. Unmarried parachuting. Unmarried women parachuting on Sundays. Could face fines. Explanation. An old law. Enforcement is doubtful. Really? Blimey. In Sweden, it's illegal to spontaneously combust. No, no. It's illegal to spontaneously dance in a bar or restaurant. Explanation. Venues require permits for dancing. Wow, I suppose there's a logic to that. Canada, it's illegal to challenge someone to a duel. Explanation, under the criminal code, dueling is prohibited. Um, UK, it's illegal to be drunk in a pub. <laughs> yeah, I know this is ridiculous. Under the Licensing Act 1872. It's illegal to be drunk in a pub. And I would probably argue that nearly every single person who has ever gone to a pub regularly has at some time possibly been drunk in a pub. And every pub every Friday and Saturday night in the UK has at least one drunk person and I'm not talking just about the landlord or landlady not just, not just the people behind the bar serving 
Um, Mexico, bicycle riders may not lift their feet from the pedals. Bicycle riders may not lift their feet from the pedals. How do you stand up then? Huh? Explanation. For safety, varies by locality. How do you stand up at a traffic light then? If you can't, you just basically stop and then just fall down, wouldn't you? Sideways. In Kentucky, USA, dogs must not molest cars. <laughs> I, I, I don't even know what to make of this one. Kentucky, USA, dogs must not molest cars. I thought it said cats there for a minute. Cars. Animal control laws prevent dogs from causing damage. I think they used the wrong word, though. You know, damage cars. Why would they use that word, though, that they used? I mean, Vinny, I take him out. He goes, he's never shown much interest in cars. Never got excited near one, that's for sure. Uh, Turkey, it's illegal to wear a red fez. Banned during Atatürk's, Atatürk's reforms, law has since been relaxed. Illegal to wear a red fez in Turkey. Well, um, Finland traffic fines are calculated based on the offender's income, ensures fairness. Wealthier individuals may pay higher fines. That does seem fair, doesn't it? I would say I could see the fairness of that in all fine situations, although, to be fair, um. I knew of someone that they stole loads of money off off of a relative who was in a care home and they got their credit card and basically got loads of money out of them and they ended up paying a pound that's what that's what they paid was a pound and I, I said to him, you should have just you should have asked the judge whether or not you could pay by credit card. <laughs> but that didn't seem to go down as funny as I thought it was. So Illinois, USA, it's illegal to give a lighted car to a pet. A lighted cigar to a pet. Animal cruelty laws prohibits this. Y why would you need a law for that? What is any? I'm can, can you imagine any more of a cigar thinking, you know what? My dog. Whenever I smoke a cigar, my a cigar, my dog's always looking at me. Just begs, begs for the cigar, and I like. I don't know what to do. We'll just give it to him then. I don't know. It might be against the law. Okay. 48 South Africa it's illegal to sit closer than two meters to another person of the opposite sex wearing a bathing suit so it says no evidence likely outdated or a myth I guess if you go back a few years it could be illegal but maybe nothing to do with the bathing suit uh, okay France it's illegal to name your child Nutella or strawberry Explanation, courts can reject names not in the child's best interest. Wow. Imagine if they had that in uh, in the West. Well, I suppose the USA is in the West, isn't it? But oh, France is the West, kind of the West. Yeah, imagine if they had that in this country or in America. Yeah. I mean, I do wonder, some of the names that people come up with for their kids now, do they even consider what it's going to be like for the kid going to school? I, I do wonder, honestly, I do. I sometimes think, oh. Um, <clears throat> Iowa, eh? Iowa? 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 USA, moustaches are illegal if the bearer has a tendency to kiss other humans. No evidence, likely a myth. 
well, yeah. Uh, in Russia, it's illegal to drive a dirty car. Okay. If the license plate is obscured by dirt, fines can be issued. Isn't that the same everywhere? I'm pr I know it's the same here. If If the police are driving behind you and they can't see the number plate, they can pull you over. Uh, at the very least, get you to wipe your number plate down or something, but probably give you a fine, as far as I know. I mean, number plates are there for a reason, aren't they? I suppose. I don't know what for. Germany, it is illegal to stop on the autobahn without a valid reason. For safety, including running out of fuel. For safety, includes running out... Yeah, kind of covered that earlier, didn't we? Alabama, USA. It's illegal to drop. <laughs> ah, dear. Right, okay. You ready? In Alabama, USA. This is very specifically for Alabama. So anyone that's listening to, to this from Alabama, we, I don't think we really kind of enforce this rule in the laws in any other countries or even states. Okay. It's illegal to drive blindfolded. Okay. Let's move on. If you need to be told that it's illegal to drive blindfolded, you should not be allowed. You really shouldn't be allowed out on your own, should you? It, yeah, you, sh you just... No, it's not safe. The world is not safe for you. Um, in Colorado, USA, it's illegal to keep a couch on your porch. Okay. Uh, enforced in Boulder to prevent fire hazards. I'll be honest, I mean, I've, I've never really had my own house. I've got a flat, but I don't... Well, I, I rent it, but if I did have a house, and that house did have a porch, and I did own a sofa, or a couch, which is another word for sofa, isn't it, in a house that had a porch, I'm not sure if I would put that couch on the porch. I just don't know if I would. Thailand, it's illegal to drive shirtless. Considered indecent exposure. They're not a big fan of people walking around with that without their tops on. Some people do do it and they kind of get away with it. And it's never... I'm not saying that I really want to watch anyone walk around without a top on. But it's never the ones you want to want to see, if you know what I mean. It's the, it's always people that look like me that walk around with the tops off. France, you must have at least one breathalyzer kit in your car. Law introduced, but fines were suspended. Okay, All right. Ohio, USA, it's illegal to. I don't even know how this works. This doesn't make sense to me at all. Ohio, USA. It's illegal to get a fish drunk. Okay, I can't add to that. In Texas, it's illegal. I've disturbed anyone. Uh, uh, in Texas, USA, it's illegal. <laughs> it's 
it's illegal to sell your eyes. <laughs> I, just, just, I, don't, I don't know what to say about that. Is the more I thought, or the more I kept repeating the sentence in my in my mind, or funny, I just it's funny. <laughs> oh dear, Singapore. Well, this is kind of obvious, really. Walking around the house naked is illegal if visible from the outside. Well, why would you do it otherwise? You know, there's no point walking around if no one else can see you, is there? If it's not going to annoy anyone, don't do it. That's my, my motto. In, Ariz in <laughs> Arizona, USA, it's illegal to refuse someone a glass of water. I mean, apparently there's no evidence. Local custom, probably. To be fair, someone needs a drink of water. Give them a drink of water. Don't... I mean, I think in the UK... It's a legal thing where you have to... If someone comes in and asks for a glass of water, like a restaurant or a cafe or something, I think you have to provide that. I think. I'd have to look that up, but it's... Uh, yeah. Because some people have medical conditions where they need, a, they need a drink. Or they might just... That drink of water might be the difference that makes a difference, you know, in their, their day for whatever reason. I mean, it's just the right thing to do, isn't it? Uh, UK. Okay, I already mentioned this. Men must wear, in France, men must wear Speedo-style swimsuits in public schools. Pools, rather. Public pools, that sounds better, doesn't it? Your, for hygiene reasons, baggy swim trunks are not allowed. Wow. Okay. In Canada, it's illegal to kill a Sasquatch. I don't know what a Sasquatch is. You see, this is true, apparently. Uh, placing a, a postage stamp in the UK. Po placing a postage stamp bearing a monarch's head upside down is treason. Defacing the royal image is illegal, but enforcement is unlikely. I mean, it can be a mistake, couldn't it? never known anyone to be, go to prison for something like that but I do know people who have had quite large fines for putting out cigarettes on the floor not not on a stamp but on a but like just like in town I know people who actually got fined for that it's like wow like something like 250 quid or something because they wouldn't pay the fine so it went to court it's in Alabama, USA, it is illegal to impersonate a person of the clergy. Uh, in Denmark, you must have a permit to paint your house. Wow. In Japan, drivers will be fined for splashing pedestrians with rainwater. Good. Everyone should. It seems to me like Japan are just a lot more sensible, a lot more considerate. And I I really like consideration. I might go and move to Japan. It's, uh, I like the fact, just a bit of manners, you know? A bit of manners, a bit of just like, if you see a puddle... Don't don't drive in the in the gutter. Don't drive through it so you soak the person on the pavement. It's just uh, in Illinois, USA, Illinois, it's illegal to fall asleep in a cheese shop. <laughs> no evidence, like likely a myth. Okay, okay. In in Arkansas, USA. Honking a car horn near a sandwich shop after 9 p.m. is prohibited. Possibly an urgent, urgent, uh, no, urban legend. In Iceland, it's illegal to own a pet snake, lizard, or turtle. And that's to protect native wildlife. I think in Florida, 
it's illegal to have ferrets as pets but that's uh I'm not going to check that up in New Jersey USA it's illegal to frown at a police officer they're just making this stuff up as they go along now that's likely a myth and Portugal urinating in the ocean is illegal environmental laws may apply okay Oh, this is weird. In the UK, it's illegal to gamble in a library. Under the Library Offences Act, 1898. Wow. In Pennsylvania, this is an outdated law, likely unenforced. Pennsylvania, USA, a person is not eligible for a marriage license if they have gonorrhea. Um, uh, I I've got nothing to add for that Switzerland social animals must be kept in pairs animal welfare laws protect social species like guinea pigs so yeah that makes sense social animals like that like to be together yeah that's nice I like that so things like Switzerland and some of these um, laws that the different countries have I really like like Japan and the Netherlands and Sweden and some of these laws that are just like yeah this is actually a really good law you know it, I'm for all, it's just consideration I think that's what I'm really about being considerate and um, this next one is Nevada it's illegal to drive a camel on the highway. This is Nevada, USA. It reflects historical use of camels in the area. Since when were camel, camels a part of America travel history? Yeah. Greece. Wearing high heels at ancient sites is illegal. That's to prevent damage to monuments. Okay. In Sweden, it's illegal to name your child Metallica. Names that may cause offences may be rejected, so that's similar to earlier. <laughs> oh my goodness. This is the most absurd one ever. Right, okay. I, it's not absurd... I was like, you say, well, yeah, it should be illegal. I'm not saying it shouldn't be illegal, okay? Iowa, USA. It's illegal to throw bricks. <laughs> it's illegal to throw bricks onto highways. Motorways or whatever. It's illegal to throw bricks onto mo No explanation needed for that. It's like, okay, if we're going to do, like, what it's illegal for, it's illegal to throw bricks through someone's window it's illegal to throw bricks at a helicopter if you can throw hard enough it's illegal to it's like it's such a stupid law because it's obvious uh, do you reckon anyone's like stop doing that someone the police come along and stop doing that it's, like, it's not against the law is it but actually it is France it's illegal to sell dolls that do not have human faces. Apparently there's no evidence for that. In the UK, it's illegal to jump the queue in tube ticket halls. Uh, apparently this is enforced under the Transport for London bylaws. I've never seen it enforced. Ever. Not when I lived in London. Italy. It's illegal to eat or drink near public monuments in Rome. That's to protect historical sites. Okay. In Minnesota, it's illegal to sleep naked. Okay, no evidence for that one. How would you... How would... How? How... how it's just like no way of knowing what people are doing, is it? Unless, of course, you know, you're on a bus. Australia... 
it's illegal to be in possession of 50 kilograms of potatoes in Western Australia. So, Potato Marketing Corporation regulated sales laws relaxed. Okay, so it's not an issue anymore. Uh, <laughs> okay, this next one. New York, USA. It's illegal to take a selfie with a tiger. <laughs> oh, dear. I'm not even going to explain why that is, obviously. Um, you don't really want to be doing stuff like that. Uh, to be fair, if you did try and do a selfie with a tiger, chances are you're not going to go to court. You'll be going somewhere else. Finland. Taxi drivers must pay royalties if they pl play music while transporting customers. That's just public performance of music. Wow. This is a bit over the top, doesn't it? So they're not allowed to listen to the radio, basically. That's not fair on the on the drivers, is it? Um, I mean, no wonder they talk. They got nothing else to do. I personally would pay extra for the for the taxi driver to listen to music if it meant they weren't talking to me. UK, it's illegal. It is illegal to fire a cannon within 300 yards of a dwelling house and this was the Metropolitan Police Act 1839 in Colorado USA it's illegal to collect rainwater that sounds like a weird thing why would it be why apparently it was a law but it's no huh Romania, it's illegal to wear purple on Thursdays, likely a myth. In Singapore, it's illegal to urinate in an elevator, <laughs> not an elephant, an elevator. It's illegal to, to urinate in an elevator. I think you find that like everywhere in the world, it's illegal to do that. I don't think it's like a thing you can do most places. I don't think anyone's going to say, oh my God, I'm not going to Singapore. They don't let me urinate in the, like, I can't use a, the, 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 the lift as a, as a toilet. No. I think you find it's frowned upon most places. Italy, oh, we've done that one. Uh, it's illegal to be drunk while in charge of a horse. This is a UK one under the Licence of Act 1872. Uh, in Switzerland, you cannot mow your lawn on Sundays. Good. See, these make sense to me. Wyoming, USA. You cannot take a picture of a rabbit from January to April without an official permit relating to wildlife protection laws. You cannot take a picture of a rabbit from January to April. I cannot, I cannot, I, I can't, I can't, no, I don't understand that. I understand the sentence, I just, hmm? Uh, in Germany... Okay, I want to read that one out because it's a bit heavy okay in Denmark I'm going to end on this one <sighs> this can't be true this can't be true but it's not saying whether it's true or not in Denmark attempting to escape from prison is not illegal how can that be how can that be? I mean, how how can it? It makes no sense. How can it not be? No, that doesn't make sense, does it? Like, yeah. But that's it. I've I've done a hundred. I've read a hundred, pretty much, of the laws. Some weird and unusual laws from around the world some of which are true some of which 
are not so true but ultimately it's been emotional it's been a really 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 wonderful experience <laughs> and now I'm going to go I'm going to go to the toilet and I'm going to have something to eat in that order not at the same time so thank you for listening I'm sorry if I made you if I was laughing and I disturbed your sleep it's just that it made me laugh I couldn't help it I could edit it out but I'm not going to uh, <sighs> so take care thank you for listening remember to be kind to yourself because you do deserve to be happy be gentle with yourself Lots of love. Bye. Relax. In a more deep and meaningful way. Maybe in a way that can not just allow you to feel calmer now and throughout the time we spend together here not just relaxed at the end of the recording when it's finished and you can enjoy that sense of comfort and peace but also I think it would be nice to have those feelings of relaxation continue for longer after the recording is ended so that you can still benefit from listening to my voice maybe in a few hours time perhaps tomorrow And then by listening regularly, especially if you find, like some people do, and myself as well, I, sometimes I find one particular recording that really resonates with me. And I just listen to it over and over again, like every morning, every evening. There was this recording from, we're going back to about 1999. It, was a, it wasn't hypnosis, but it was a guided visualization. So it kind of was hypnosis, really. And I managed to find it again, and it still has the same effect on me. And part of it was... person's voice relaxed me just felt so peaceful and I'd look forward to listening to her in the morning and in the evening And I knew before even pressing the play button that as soon as I'd done that, pressed the play button, this was in the days of CD players, press the play button, 
In fact, it might have even been a tape, a tape recorder. I'd lie down on the bed and then even without necessarily listening to her words because I had them memorized really it was as if my body knew exactly what to do and the muscles just almost went into automatic relaxation. And I remember my mind would slow down. Now, now, I was, I was listening to this recording in the early days of learning hypnosis and long before I ever made any videos or audio recordings myself because I didn't start doing that till 2006. But I knew, I knew how helpful I found being able to just let go, to have that trust in the person that I'm listening to. knowing that it's going to be just as relaxing if if not more so each time you hear my voice you may feel the same some people have been listening to me for over a decade. Maybe not solidly, obviously not 24 hours a day, but maybe people come back. Some people maybe listen every day. And something that I do, which you may not realize by listening, is when I record these recordings, now for example, I also am affected by the words that I say. So if I said to you, focus on your feet, notice your feet relaxing. I will be focusing on my feet. I will be noticing my feet relaxing. If I said focus on your hands, and maybe notice the difference between each hand. 
perhaps notice the, the air in the room, the temperature of the room on the backs of your hands. You may start to notice what almost feels like a very light breeze. Even though there may not be any type of breeze at all where you are right now. And as you become aware of your hands, I'm also aware of how relaxed my hands are feeling now. comes to potentially drifting off to sleep, which may be the reason you're listening. I also feel drowsy when I make these recordings. I also notice my mind drifting. In fact, at times, I've actually fallen asleep. Without even noticing. And then I carry on talking. It's only when I listen back to do the editing. I hear snoring. And I think, I don't remember snoring. I remember talking. Is snoring or is a pig turned up? That's what I sound like when I snore. And I get really into the whole experience. I don't know how you feel. How relaxed you feel in your feet. How relaxed you feel in your hands. I have noticed more and more that the more relaxed deeper level of comfort you feel the easier your breathing becomes It's almost like that additional muscle relaxation. This allows you to breathe easier.
without necessarily focusing on your breath. However, being able to notice the ease in which You breathe so naturally. You breathe so very easily and smoothly. My breathing, improving, when I've got my eyes closed. I tend to visualize beautiful field with trees and flowers producing all that life-giving oxygen. Feels nice. To, if nothing else, just taking some time away from everything. Enjoying that feeling of peace, serenity. a joyful heart the time seems to just Drip by so very slowly. He 
peaceful. Completely. Unattached. To any thought. whatsoever in this moment completely free Noticing that the mind has slowed down slowed down. Because nothing really requires your attention. You can enjoy physical sensations of allowing the stress to drip out of your body. Drip in out of every part of your body. And being released from your brain and your mind. Slowly, but surely, the muscles in your legs So 
deeply. All the feelings, the pleasant feelings in your arms and shoulders. Deepening each part of your body further and deeper. in the feelings in the back of your neck feelings in your wrists, Muscles in the front of your body, are also feeling. deeply there's a sense of peace spreads through your very core. Focus on your mind. Your mind becomes even slower. Relax 
soon. slow your stomach Peaceful in your stomach. Your back. Notice how relaxed you now feel. spine, from your brain all the way down the middle of your back, sending and receiving millions of messages every day. Deeply relaxed. Spreading those signals down your spinal cord into every part of your body. Your shins and your calf muscles. Your elbows, 
feelings of peace and tranquility spreading through your body tips of your toes to your eyes your fingers all the way to your lower back Letting go, really letting go. Just wandering away. Happy to let go. Let go. Completely. Let go. So tranquil, your whole body. Joy in a sense of letting go. Even more
Joy. The space. This space. Of peace. And safety. Letting go. Maybe we can just focus on the different parts of your body. Just to notice Forehead and your eyes. Seeing a sense of complete freedom. Absolute freedom.
peaceful energy. have noticed your mind drifting Peaceful. Blissful peace, blissful peace. Total peace.
body feels almost invisible. you could start to notice that you are feeling more relaxed even though I've not purposely focused your mind upon that sense of physical comfort that is growing within you throughout your body and your mind starts to slow down and that could be almost in recognition of I guess my speech not being particularly fast and things just generally feel calmer just by listening to my voice you give yourself a, an opportunity to take a break from the day take a break from your life as it is and to give yourself a rest giving yourself permission to take some time off 
and to allow your body to relax and allow your mind to slow down which in turn releases the tension any stresses that you had in your body it's almost as if the parts of your body just open up allowing the negativity out and at the same time replacing that negativity with positive healing energy which then fills your body up and your mind to also starts to appreciate those feelings of increasing confidence and an almost uplifting feeling positive healing an energy that spreads through your body like a wave of comfort and all this comes from just allowing yourself a few minutes maybe half an hour however long you want it to be to just rest and allow your mind and your body to almost reset itself to the, to the settings of comfort and relaxation calmness which allows more room for feelings of pleasure and happiness to move around your body and into your mind almost as if your mind and your body are sinking together almost mirroring each other with that growing positivity and calmness and it feels nice it really does feel nice to know that you are the one that has allowed yourself to feel more comfort and to experience more of this deep relaxation spreading throughout your body and as I focus on each part of your body you can notice that that part becomes even more relaxed just by focusing on it becomes even more calm and comfortable just by focusing and as I move down your body starting at your head the parts that you've already focused on 
will continue to relax deeply in those parts that we've not yet focused on will just automatically release any remaining tension in anticipation of even more comfort about to come. Now, I'm going to start by focusing on your forehead. Just being aware of the feelings of your forehead. And any background sounds, like Mr. Herbert the Pigeon, can just allow you to feel even more relaxed. Just means you're in the moment. This isn't this isn't a sterile environment. This is the world. I live in the countryside, so there's lots of nature sounds around. So as you focus on your forehead. Just notice how it becomes even more relaxed as you focus only on my voice and that part of your body. Moving down to your eyes, focusing on your eyes, noticing how the, your eyelids feel so heavy, yet so light at the same time. And all the muscles around your eyes relaxing completely. Moving your focus down to your mouth. Your tongue, your teeth, and your gums, and the whole of your mouth relaxing, calm, and loose as you focus now on your jaw, not just part of your jaw near your mouth, your chin, but all the way up the sides of your face to your ears, that whole of your jaw, feeling more in on your neck, the front of your neck and your throat, relaxing and loose and calm, the sides of your neck, the right and left side of your neck. Focusing on the back of your neck, letting go of any tension that may have been there before, and enjoying that sense of increasing comfort and release. 
experience in the back of your neck. Moving down your back, moving either side of your spine, right from the top of your back, all the way down to the bottom of your back. down to your lower back, as you move up and down your spine, you can feel the muscles either side of your spine relaxing even more. As those muscles relax, that sense of comfort starts to spread outwards from your spine into both sides of your back, the top of your back, the middle and your lower back, and as you scan Gently and slowly up and down your back as the muscles in the top of your back relax and become looser. The muscles in the middle of your back also seem to just almost divide from each other separating and almost melting. And in your lower back, there seems to be an extra special feeling of comfort. This Spreads into your hips, so down your lower back and into your hips, into the area where your coccyx are, and into your buttocks, and all those muscles that spread in your lower back to your hip area, start to melt, start to really let go, and you know we're about to focus on your shoulders, your back and your spine. As you focus on your shoulders, you may notice that they're already feeling really loose. They're already feeling Those muscles that move from your neck into your shoulders. Feel so soft and gentle. 
so smooth. Feeling in your shoulders. Seems to spread deep into your shoulders. That sense of relaxation, not just traveling deeply into your muscles, but also relaxing the bones and moving all the way to underneath your arms relaxing that whole area between the tops of your shoulders and underneath your arms healing so relaxed and comfortable in your shoulders, which sends that deep healing message into your You may feel almost as if your arms are not even there because they're so relaxed, so deeply relaxed. So. spreading all the way down your arms to your elbows including your elbows circumference spread Forearms and your wrists, feeling so heavy, yet at the same time, so light and gentle. Focus. 
sense of real peace. It just seems to feel so familiar. tips attention to the front of your body, so comfortable, Muscles in your thighs, your knees so relaxed. 
muscles and your shins So I'm going to start counting down now from 20 down to 1. You can imagine in a way it's like just walking down some steps. And each step, all 20 steps, and each step represents a level of comfort. Each step rep 
represents a deepening of that comfort. And the further you, you walk down those steps, the deeper and more relaxed you feel. So, starting with number 20. Eighteen. Seventeen. Sixteen.
14. Thirteen.
hate. Six.
As you focus on your eyes, I'm going to count down from ten down to one. Focus in just on your eyes, your eyelids, the 
muscles around your eyes, your eyeballs themselves, the whole area that makes up your eye. As we count down from ten down to one, whilst focusing on your eyes, you will become twice as relaxed with each number counting down. you may find that all you want to do is just drift off to sleep and if that's what you want then just allow yourself to do that Focusing on your eyes, I'm going to begin counting down from ten down to one. Right now, ten.
So counting down from ten to one, ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four. Three, two, one. And maybe that was a bit too quick in order to relax. Maybe it's a bit too fast for you to notice the calming of your body. Maybe even a little bit of pressure there like 
and you're counting down from 10 to 1. What do you expect me to do, man? You expect me just to go all floppy just because you're counting down? You could try it again, but this time I'll go a bit slower. This time, and you focus on the whole of your body before we focus on your legs. Just notice how your body does start to feel more relaxed. With every number that I count down. Ten. Seven, six, five, four. just notice how how you feel generally how your body feels it's not necessarily even about counting down from 10 to 1 it's that space that you have that space between being active physically or mentally to just sitting or lying down or just being there not doing anything not saying anything not needing to think think about anything so it, op it opens up a space you know a bit of a space a gap and the more I count down from 10 to 1 the bigger that gap becomes so there's that gap of calmness of comfort, of relaxation. It's a nice feeling. And it moves those stresses or discomforts physically or emotionally, moves them away. allows you to just slow down. So I'm going to count again from 10 down to 1 and notice that gap widening. The 
gap. And as it widens, it's almost like the the stress and the tension falls into the gap. It gives you that distance, that space. Seven, six, How does your body feel now? Can you notice that that you're feeling calmer? Feeling more relaxed. As we now focus on the legs. Just your legs. We're just going to start with focusing on your thighs. course it's not the most exciting thing to be doing because I'm I'm sure like most of your body there's not a lot going on right now just focusing on the whole of your thighs the tops of your thighs the sides of your thighs, the bottoms of your thighs, your outer thighs and your inner thighs. Basically the whole of your thigh that leads into your hip. And then 
goes down to your knee joints. Now this is a big area. It's a very heavy area. It's very strong. Probably the strongest muscles in your body are in your thighs. But I don't think we perhaps give enough attention to our thighs. Perhaps we don't acknowledge how important our thighs are to our lives. How much they actually do for us all through our lives. It may seem or sound really weird, but I think that all of our body parts, especially our thighs, need some TLC. A bit of love shown. A bit of acknowledgement. A thank you. Gratitude for what our thighs do for us. And I know this may sound a bit strange. Maybe you think, why am I? Surely I should be out in, in the garden hugging a tree or something. Or it's hard to set a microphone up on a tree. That's why I'm doing this indoors. Otherwise I would be outside hugging a tree. No, I can't see the television from the tree. You move down to your knees, gain such an important part. And I think we don't necessarily, I'll speak for myself here, I don't necessarily appreciate all that my knees do for me until I have a problem with my knee. So occasionally, if I have a Maybe I bash it or it's aching for some reason. It's then that I realise how much it does. You know, the benefit of being able to use my legs without any kind of physical discomfort is a beautiful thing. That's possibly not appreciated until... It's temporarily removed, you know, that comfort. But as you focus on your knees, regardless of how your knees feel, you can have that sense of gratitude and love to your knees for all that they do for you. And you can still have that attention on your thighs. Maybe notice how your thighs feel. Maybe you can notice that they are relaxing more deeply. And as you focus now, on the bottoms of your legs, your shins, 
in the calf muscles, the bones between your knees and your feet, incorporating of course your ankles, so important. It's had even the, like the slightest sprain of an ankle knows how how much we take our ankles for granted and it's kind of strange in a way when you think that you know logically our wrists are a lot thinner than the rest of our arms which is okay doesn't can't see any problem with that because we're just picking stuff up but our ankles are so much thinner than the rest of our legs and from a physics perspective or logical even it doesn't really make sense that all this weight would ultimately be resting on your ankles then leading to your feet that thin area thin bone yet it does so much great work supports us supports our body for a lifetime Helps us to balance. Helps you to get around and be mobile. And there's the calf muscles, of course. When I was younger, I couldn't see the point in calf muscles. They didn't seem to do anything. Like, okay, if I walked around on tiptoes, then my calf muscles get some work. But of course that's not true. The calf muscles are being used whenever we use our legs. And your shins. They're to protect your lower legs. shaped in a way almost as a protector for the bone leading of course to your ankles and your feet but we're not going to focus on your feet we're just going to focus on the legs I realise that now that I've mentioned your feet, you're probably focusing on them anyway. So maybe I should focus on your feet a little bit. You can have them in your awareness. The same as you have your thighs in your awareness. Even though we haven't been focusing on your thighs for a few minutes been focusing on your ankles there's still that sensation of comfort in your thighs almost that movement of energy because the thighs hold lots of different sensations of course there's the muscles the big strong muscles that we have in our thighs but the skin on the outside of the thighs as in the outside of all of our body can be very sensitive 
sensitive to the touch, sensitive to temperature. And inside your thighs, the bones, there's the muscle, there's the blood vessels, the arteries. So all this stuff is inside your thighs. And I guess sometimes it'd be nice if you could actually put your fingers inside your thighs and massage. So you can massage on the outside, of course, but to be able to get deep into the muscles, to be able to just massage inside your thighs, massage in the bones of your leg, massage in all the veins and just gently healing your thighs. could move down, massaging inside your knees, just massaging those bones, but with healing fingertips, spreading that healing energy deep into the joints of your knees, and of course there's the back of your your knee, you know, the inside crease where your knee is. It's a very sensitive area. Very, feels very nice when you stroke it. That might be because it's an area that's not really touched very often. It's almost like a hidden part, that crease in your legs. It's almost like a part that has a, a sensitivity which is a little bit different. Of course it's protected by your legs. So you can imagine putting your fingers into that crease in your legs. fold in between your legs, you can just massage with your fingertips, imagine your fingertips going inside, massaging the muscle tissue, you can of course feel the, the bones of your knees healing through your fingertips. And then as you go down to your calf muscles, now that's a part I'd like to be able to really put my fingertips deep inside my calf muscles, massaging every single tissue of that muscle, healing every part. same for my shins, just massaging and gently stroking the bones, gently stroking them, healing in a loving way, because they deserve to be treated as the precious bones that they are, because our legs are so precious, as in all the other parts of our body. They're more precious than any jewel on the planet. Now when you start to think about your legs in this way, it can change your perspective. It might sound a bit, a bit silly to start with, 
the idea of having the love for your legs, showing appreciation for your thighs, wanting to be able to put your hands in your thighs, and massage the muscles in the bones, and to get your fingers deep in there, releasing all tension, just to show how much you care about your legs, how much you care for what your legs do for you regularly, your knees, your calves, your ankles. The strength of your ankles, considering how thin they are compared to the rest of your legs, especially your thighs, yet they're so strong, so flexible, absolutely amazing things your ankles are. Truly a gift because of what they do for you. Supporting all that weight, regardless of how what weight you are, even if you're only eight stone, it's still a lot of weight on these little ankles. stone, double that, yet my ankles support my body all the time, although they do give off a sigh of relief when I sit down, as in fact my whole legs do, my feet, feet also go toes clap, I'm so happy, the legs really are amazing. And I know that talk, uh, talking about your legs is probably, possibly the, one of the most in, most boring things you've ever heard anyone say, possibly. But boring or not, everything I said is true. Your legs are amazing. Your legs deserve not just respect, they deserve to relax deeply. They deserve to take some time out of the day to just let go completely. Because the legs are so, such a most, you know, very important part of your body, when you relax your legs, the rest of your body also naturally follows in that 
journey of comfort. I can feel it in my hips. My hips feel really loose. And also in my lower back as well. My lower back really feels, it feels stretched. Even though I'm just sitting in a chair and there's no stretching as far as I'm aware that I'm doing. But it's almost as if the muscles have just relaxed so much that there is a natural stretch as the tension has reduced a lot. Continue to feel wonderfully relaxed. Ten, nine, eight, seven. So I'm just going to count down from five down to one. And as I count down, if you just focus on the numbers, just the numbers, counting down, and notice how you feel in this moment as you hear the numbers counting down, knowing that those numbers counting down represents you feeling calmer, not just in your body, but also relaxing your mind. And just notice how you feel. There's nothing to do. There's nothing to say. There's nothing to think about. Starting with number five. Four. Three. One. As you notice the gradual letting go of the tension in your body. You may also begin to notice and be aware of how your mind is starting to slow down. This is just a natural thing that happens. It's not really a special procedure. It's just natural because as you're body relaxes, your mind also starts to relax. And the more 
your mind relaxes, the more your body relaxes. It's just a continuous circle of relaxation. And there's that calmness that comes from relative quietness. You know, even even if there's background sounds, either your side or mine, is still going to be quite calm. You know, you haven't got the television on, there's no music in the background unless you're listening to the recording with music, of course. You're very likely not going to be sitting in a room with other people. Of course you might be, but generally it's more ideal if you can do this on your own. So, no distractions. And when you stop thinking about stuff, relaxation automatically rises. A sense of comfort starts to grow. And without trying to build it up into something fantastical or something magical, this is just a natural process, something that's easy to accomplish. In fact, it's almost you know, the sense of relaxing completely happens really when you put no effort into it. It's not something that you can really force. It's something that happens naturally and part of the process of this recording and others is simply to allow you to take advantage of this space, this time, to just let go, to just be here, to be in tune with how you feel. Yet with the intention of wanting to relax deeply. And maybe even to fall asleep depending on what it is that you wish for yourself in this moment. As we know, relaxing is the majority of the process of falling asleep. The actual falling asleep part is a tiny bit at the end. The deeper relaxed you become, the easier you find yourself drifting. You can also, if you choose, stay focused on my voice and really enjoy the process of gradually relaxing each 
each muscle in your body. Effortlessly. And just observing the sensation of letting go. This time I'm going to count from six down to one. And you can notice your mind calming down more with each number you hear me say. Six, And as you focus on your mind, you may notice. 
notice that there are some thoughts still there, maybe some stubborn thoughts that for some reason perhaps need your attention. Send love to those thoughts. Sprinkle those thoughts with love. Like little petals from a flower. Just sprinkle it over them. Petals filled with love towards those thoughts. To let those thoughts know that you're not abandoning them, you just need them, you require them to just calm down, slow down, quiet down. As you focus on those remaining thoughts, as we count down this time from seven down to one, with each number, just imagine sprinkling those flower petals of love, kindness, gratitude. Over those thoughts. Which will allow them to just. Melt away. And relax deeply. With every number. Those thoughts will become more. with number seven.
changing now. Notice how relaxed you're feeling in your body. We're going to focus the more relaxed your hands are, the more relaxed your body and mind are. And as you focus on your hands and your fingers, nothing needed to be done, there's no clenching of fists or tensing the fingers or anything like that, it's just noticing and focusing on your Noticing how they feel. Because the more relaxed your hands feel, the calmer your Noticed that your mind is starting to drift. Just on your hands and fingers, allowing them to experience a real deepening of that relaxation in your hands and fingers. number from eight down to one you can almost feel that healing and relaxing energy spreading into your hands Each 
Seven. Just being here now. Nothing to think about. Nothing to do. Nothing to say. Everything just feels calmer. This is your natural state of being. This is how you just normally feel when you take away all that other stuff that we add. You know, things like stress and worry and overthinking and anxiety. take 
that Allah, which is what we do, what we're doing now. We're left with a real sense of peacefulness, which comes through very quickly. Because ultimately, it's just a feeling. A feeling of comfort. It's almost as if we've gone inside yourself and you've found a special place where everything is peaceful. place where you can feel relaxed and your natural sense of comfort. A place where you can be you. Where you can accept yourself for who you are. A place where you're not trying to anybody else ever a place where you can actually not just love yourself but in some ways more importantly you can like yourself appreciate who you are sense of gratitude is in the air all around you. And that's also a place where you can actually feel the healing energy soaking into your body. soaking into your body and that healing energy spreads through your veins traveling to each and every single part of your body start to realize that actually that healing energy has not just entered into your brain, it's become part of your brain. And that spinal fluid is now mixed with healing energy. Not just allowing you to feel so much more relaxed and healthy in this moment, but also you start to realize that actually what's happening now with that healing relaxing energy spreading through your body is actually changing your life it's actually changing the way you're going to feel not just now but tomorrow and the next day as your health improves Not just your physical health, but your mental health. Things that used to bother you in the past, for some reason, no longer have the effect 
what they used to. Because something has changed deep within you. Maybe things that used to cause you to feel anger no longer have that power to control you the way they seem to be able to before as you realize that you are the one who decides what affects you. You're the one who decides to feel relaxed and calm when you choose to enjoy noticing these natural developments healing, continuing to grow and improve your life day by day. Including, of course, your ability to relax so much easier. sleep in is the most natural thing in the world to you because falling asleep is something that you've done so many times in your life and you know that you as we all were, with the ability to fall asleep naturally. We were born with that ability to just drift off into a deep, healing sleep. Even when we're kids, sometimes we'll fall asleep when we don't even want to. We try to <laughs> stay awake. Maybe it's a birthday in the morning or it's Christmas or a holiday or something we look forward to. We don't want to go to sleep. But the more we want to stay awake, the more we just start to drift. the more you fight drifting, the more you try and stop yourself from drifting asleep, the deeper and stronger that drifting becomes. Because we're born not just with the need to relax deeply and to naturally fall asleep. It's our birthright. It's part of our DNA. And sometimes as we get older in life, perhaps at times we have forgotten that relaxing completely it's not only a wonderfully pleasant experience, it's also really easy.
because that's all it is, it's just deciding to let go. And when you press the play button on my recordings, you have given permission for my voice to relax you. When you press that play button, you have given me permission for my words to affect you in a positive positive way, opening up your mind to useful and healing suggestions that can have such an amazing effect on how you feel right now, as well as those changes that continue long after the recording ends, those changes within Continue to flourish and grow, transforming your life in a positive, beautiful way, allowing you to move forward in your life in the direction that you choose for yourself. And this feeling, this feeling that you can experience of safety, comfort, calmness, This feels so nice. It's such a healthy place to be. And that positivity grows within you. to find that you're more relaxed physically and in your mind is more relaxed. And it's not that you're thinking slower, it's just that your mind will be less clogged up with unnecessary negativity. Because from now on, your mind rejects negativity. From now on, you're going to start noticing when negativity arises. You can just say stop. Stop. And that negativity will turn around and leave you alone. So 
と、and that negativity would disappear. As you notice that you feel way more relaxed than you probably expected. You can now congratulate yourself because you're the person that has done this. You Are the one that has opened your mind up to the simple facts that you can feel more relaxed in your body and in your mind. You've opened your mind up to the birthright of being able to just. Fall asleep easily when you choose. And that's a nice feeling, don't you think? Feels nice, doesn't it? To feel. Spreading through your body and your mind. To spend time in that that special place where negativity can no longer enter. Negativity is banned. It's barred. It's not allowed entry. Doesn't doesn't des doesn't deserve to be here. Doesn't belong here. Negativity has no place in your life. Room for more comfort, more healing, more relaxation, more peace. Doesn't it? To just to let go of everything. And I'm going to count down now from twenty down to one. Continue to relax. And if you choose, you can drift to sleep. With every number, you hear me say. You can feel twice as relaxed. Or if you choose, you can feel twice as sleepy. And now, twenty.
This is your time to just take a break. Your time to relax, to allow your mind to slow down. Give yourself permission to take a break from everything. And you're the only person that can make that decision. You're the only person that can actually tell your mind Just relax. To just take some time off. So that you can focus on your body getting in touch with you feel physically and in the process of this body scan where you focus on different parts of your body those parts that you focus on and observe, even though you're not purposely requesting for those parts of your body to relax, it's kind of expected. You expect when you listen to my voice to feel 
more relaxed naturally. Because when you're listening to me, your attention is focused on my words. And as my words guide you to focus on those parts of your body, your focus increases. actually calms your mind and when your mind calms down your body relaxes Pushing out stress and tension, healing all the parts of your body, including your skin, your bones, your blood, and all of your organs inside your body, all of the muscles all of the fat, all of everything, every hair in your body is filled with that healing energy. And when your brain fills relaxation increases deeply increases in a way that your mind starts to feel perhaps a bit drowsy because it's not needed and your mind starts to drift what's needed. So if you're listening to this and what you need is deep relaxation, that's what you'll get. If what you need is to fall asleep naturally and easily as your mind drifts, that's also Because by, by 
pressing that play button on the podcast and listening to me, I give permission to my body and my mind. In fact, I give the command to your body and your mind to relax. Drift off to sleep if that's what you want or need. And as I focus on the different parts of your body, Focusing on different parts of your body. Find yourself drifting. But you don't realize you're drifting until you stop drifting. You can hear that again from my voice focusing on different parts of your body starts to relax even deeper, because that drifting is basically you already in the sleep zone. sleep, and that's the last you remember, 
let's focus again on parts of your body. Focusing this time on your forehead. Focusing on your fingers. Maybe you want to move your fingers a little bit so you can focus on each one individually. focus on both of your hands now, they may seem to just melt into one, where does your right hand start and your left hand end, almost as if Focusing on your knees. Just noticing how your knees feel. Now focusing on your elbows. Focusing in on both of your elbows. Just observing the feeling of your elbows.
start now and I'd like you just first of all just to see yourself lying down on that massage table lying on your front your head is supported your arms are supported and you feel comfortable and the breathing is really easy and you feel You feel confident in how you look as well, so there's none of that issue of body problems or shyness, because I'm a professional, and this is a therapy session, so none of that stuff matters whatsoever. This is about you. This is about how you feel and how you can enjoy that sense of comfort and relaxation that comes from letting go and allowing my hands and my fingers to relax you by massaging your body. I want to start off just by placing my hands on the back of your head, just gently, just so you can feel what my hands feel like really on you, so you can maybe feel the warmth of my hands on the back of your head, I want to move my hands to the side of your head, not pressing but just holding them there very gently, maybe over your ears and a little bit on your face, just so you can feel my hands, so you can become accustomed to them. And now I put my hands on the back of your head again and gently let them slide down onto the back of your neck. You can feel
feel my hands. Gently stroking the back of your neck to start with. Just so you can get used to the the feeling of my hands on your skin. Get accustomed to it. Realize that you're safe. It's all good. It's all fine. And I'm going to start gently massaging the muscles in the back of your neck. This is a very trusting situation, really, because our necks are so fragile. And to have someone have their hands around your neck in that way can sometimes be problematic for people, which is why massages are quite good, because it allows you to relax and to... Get in touch with trust to feel peaceful and calm. And as I massage the sides of your neck gently, moving from the bottom of your neck which would be sort of near where your shoulders start, I guess, all the way up to your jaw, your ears kind of area, that side of your neck. Of course, is a lot longer than the front of your neck. Massaging the, the back of your neck, especially that area where perhaps we hold tension. And as that area is massaged, you can actually feel a sense of release in the back of your neck. And maybe you can breathe it out as well. Notice how it feels. Notice how you feel. Then moving down to that area between your neck and your shoulders. That muscly area. Starting to massage that area on both sides. I mean, this would be the area that a lot of people would massage if they were going to give you like a shoulder massage. Even that's not technically the shoulders, but it's all the muscles that lead to the shoulders. From the neck. And again, that can hold tension and stress. And when massaged, sometimes a nice deep massage is useful. You decide how deep that massage is. And just allow the knuckles just to dig in to get to those muscles and to really relax them all the time being firm yet gentle with you and just stroking down that area to your actual shoulders 
move into the muscles of your shoulders. And maybe initially just pulling up the shoulders a little bit off the table, just to give you a little bit of a stretch, but very gently. And you've got the muscles at the front of your shoulders, the sides and the back. This is a part that can really take quite a bit of pressure, quite a bit of uh, kneading, if if you wish, to really release the tension, to really get into those muscles and let your fingers in there and you can feel really nice. Sometimes just being stroked gently or being massaged quite strongly can all be beneficial to the relaxation. Of the muscles in your shoulders. down your arms you do one arm at a time starting with your right arm and what I'll do is I'll just lift your arm up just hold it to the side of you I want it to still be attached and I just massage the tops of your arms. All the way down to your forearms and to your wrists. Massaging that part, the softer part, which is the under part of the arm, which leads to the crease in your elbow, the inside. It's much more sensitive skin. Sometimes just having that stroked can feel really nice, pleasurable and relaxing. Now moving down to your right hand. Holding your hand in both of my hands. Just pressing gently on the back of your hand and stretching the fingers ever so lightly. At the same time, pressing down and massaging each finger. And then starting to massage the palms of your hands. Just turning the hand gently, stretching it gently. Actually having your hand held can really be 
an emotional experience sometimes, even if it is with a stranger, someone you don't know very well, like a massage person or a therapist maybe, because it's intimate. safe and as I put that right arm back down where it was and you do the same with your left arm exactly the same Massaging the muscles in your arm all the way down to your wrist. Stroking the inside of your arm. Just being gentle or as firm as you require. Massaging your left hand. Stretching the fingers gently. Massaging the palm of your left hand. Just rest your left arm back down. And start to massage your back, the biggest part of your body. Starting at the top, starting again where you would have been. been top and between your shoulders and then your neck going back massaging that area again but this time moving downwards making a downward stroke to the middle of your back working from the outside Massaging the your back, but the the outsides of your back, the parts where your arms would maybe rest against. your front to your back, and just massaging down, firmly but gently, as firm as you want, moving down and then moving across a little bit and moving all the way down again very gentle, yet firm as you choose. And eventually you get to the spine, you can massage the muscles on either side of your spine, from the top of your neck all the way down to your lower back. Even 
do that a few times. Sometimes people choose the knuckle or the, you know, two fingers and just go either side of the spine. Almost just push down, go all the way down to the bottom of the spine. Each time releasing tension and opening up the body, stretching your body so that you feel more relaxed but at the same time rejuvenated. to one side, to your right side, and from the bottom of your ribs to your pelvis, we're going to massage that area of your back, I'll stretch over the other side and I'll pull the muscles gently, and massage and push from one end that side all the way to my side, or to the middle in fact, to where your spine is, massaging that side of your spine, the opposite side to where I'm standing, it's almost like kneading bread, there's that big area which is firm, yeah, lots there to massage. Potentially one of the most important places to actually have a massage because you really feel it, you really feel the release and the pleasure of having your lower back massaged, it releases so much from your body that's not useful. Starting a healing process, which will continue long after this recording is over. Massaging this part of your body not only feels really good for you, it's actually fun to do. Because it is, as I said, like kneading bread. It's a part that you can really get a hold of and really massage deeply, if that's your choice. And then I'm going to move over to the other side of your body and do the same with the opposite part. kneading and massaging from the sides all the way to the middle of your back where your spine is. Pressing and kneading. Firm and gentle at the same time. And it feels so releasing. This mixture of pleasure, comfort, release, calmness, relaxation, all mixed together. Plus there's that feeling from your stomach of it's being stretched. Even though you're on your stomach now, you can feel it being stretched because that whole area is connected to your stomach. Now we're going to move, we'll move further up to the top of your body and I'm going to do the same. This time starting 
here, the upper back, put my hands forward over and mass massage in that area up to your spine, from the side of your body up to your spine. So some of that massage area, the muscle tissue uh, or whatever, fatty tissue even, will be possibly from the chest. Feels all connected to the chest from the back. Connect together. And we're going to be massaging and just pulling some of that skin from the side up and massaging that area from your upper back all the way to your spine. down a bit and I continue up the middle of your back doing exactly the same thing as gentle or as deep as you choose now I move off to the other side again and do the exact same thing with the top of your back on the other side from pretty much underneath your arm area really to your spine and then continuing that all the way down including your lower your middle of your back to your thighs, the backs of your thighs, and the sides of your thighs, starting with your right leg, massaging the back and the sides of your thighs, gently and firmly. There's a lot of muscles there. It's an area that can be very tense at times and maybe needs a little bit more pressure than the rest of the body. But that's up to you. You can gently stroke the back of your legs where, you know, opposite your knee joint or underneath your knee joint very sensitive, gentle area. Then working down to your calf muscles, massaging your calf muscles thoroughly and deeply if you choose. Using both hands Fingers digging deep. To your ankles. And the back of your back of your ankles. Just gently massage in that area. Maybe lifting the leg and stretching it a little bit. Moving to the right foot. Massaging the bottom of your feet. sides of your feet, the 
gently but firm enough so that it tickles. Just allow the pleasure that you get from having your feet massage to just overtake you as I continue to massage your feet, the bottoms of your feet, the sides, your arches, your heel. Put a lot of pressure into your heel and it feels amazing. Yet the arches need to be a bit more gentle. Stretching your toes gently. Massaging the bottoms of your toes with my fingers. Each one. to the left leg to do exactly the same thing. Starting with the top of the thighs, working the back of the thighs and the sides, massaging deeply and gently that whole area. Working all the way down This is an area that maybe you could like to spend more time relaxing and massaging. So perhaps if you wanted I could make a future recording where I spend more time in one particular area. As you move down. muscles, massaging your calf muscles firmly and gently, working down your ankle and into your feet, massaging the backs of your feet bottoms of your feet, stretching your toes and massaging each toe individually, and that feeling of pleasure, the release that you experience when you're having your feet massaged, feels really Turn over in your mind, laying on your back. I'm just going to start again at your neck area. And your shoulders. Just to fresh, because now I'm going to massage your face gently, starting off with your forehead, your eyes are closed and you can just stretch your eyes a little bit, pushing up on your eyebrows.
just massage in and around your scalp. Massaging down your cheeks, around your ears, into your jaw, gently. The sides of your neck. Starting by massaging the very top of your chest, where the collarbone is, either side of the collarbone. And you're just massaging the whole of the chest. Chest around it feels quite a large area as you move from one side to the next, moving with my hands underneath pretty much where your arms are. some of the muscles of your back in the process, moving up over your chest, and then moving down again, Just to massage gently and slide down towards your stomach, starting in the middle of your chest. And then gradually my hands moving apart and massaging and sliding at the same time. Just below your rib cage. Moving down and massaging up again. Giving your chest all the attention that it needs to feel completely. So going to be focusing on your sides as well, an area that really doesn't get much attention, but feels really good when it's massaged. Just stroking my hands down the sides of your body, or just below your arms all the way down to your hips. Now, moving to your stomach area. I'm going to stand one side of you, like I did when I did your lower back. I'm going to do a similar process of just stretching the muscles from your side gently massaging from one side to the next moving that whole area from below your ribs all the way down to below your belly button round 
to the other side of you and repeat that. Process of relaxing deeply, calmly, you feel loose, you feel free, there's something about having your stomach massaged that's different from any other part, because you do have a tendency of holding different kind of stress in your stomachs that you may not be aware of. So now massage your stomach, the front of your stomach, making circles around the belly button. gentleness and a freedom that comes from feeling how you're feeling. As I now move down the tops of your thighs, the muscles massaging them, I can do this with two legs at the same time, pressing down Massaging deeply those muscles in your thighs, the front of your thighs. Moving down to your knees, gently massaging the knees. Sliding down your shins, putting pressure on either side of your shin. Gently, softly, but firmly, moving down to your ankles, stroking the tops of your feet, and then with each foot on each hand. Gently massaging the whole of the foot, the top, the bottom, the heel, the ankle, the toes, massaging every part of your feet, feels so good just to let go and enjoy the process. Enjoy feeling so deeply relaxed. So much comfort and so many feelings that come just from touching your skin. Just lie there for as long as you choose, enjoying the feeling of deep comfort from being massaged. do is blow out some candles in your mind. There are going to be a hundred You 
going to blow each one out individually, one by one, starting at a hundred as I count down. Each time I say a number, you can imagine that candle in front of you. And I'd like you to actually physically <sighs> gently blow. Just a gentle and that candle will extinguish. And then I say the next number as we move down, and you can just blow that one. yourself feeling more and more relaxed if you need to sleep you also find yourself becoming incredibly tired and sleepy in fact you may struggle candles as you feel more and more deeply relaxed more and more sounds where you are, do be aware of those sounds for the moment, if you may start to just not even notice them. they're unimportant where I am I've got the sounds of the birds there's Horace the pigeon that likes to say hello sometimes and there's the odd plane that goes by seems important whatsoever the more candles you blow out the less important anything is the more candles you blow out further you seem to 
energy. So simple. Now we're going to start by introducing the first candle, which is a Activity growing within you. Relaxation and sleepiness. Expanding. Starting.
his thoughts, worries, concerns about the past, thoughts about the future, and even things you've been thinking about today. Just let it all go. Because none of it is useful in this moment. This is your opportunity to just focus on feeling relaxed, allowing yourself to get in touch with that natural sense of peace. That we all have within us. It's available for everyone. It just sometimes takes a little bit of effort to set up the right time and place in order for you to just let go. Because when you do decide to let go and relax, what your body starts to do because you've chosen you've chosen to just allow your body to unwind and your mind starts to slow down and it's a nice feeling it's a nice feeling at the beginning just to know that you have chosen to decide to relax deeply and because you've made that decision your body will just follow suit because sometimes all the muscles in your body need is just permission from you to relax because so often we're busy, we're going from here to there, we're walking around and we're doing stuff. And the body doesn't have any time or space to really relax deeply. So it kind of waits for you to lead the way. Waits for your permission. do give your permission and you give the say so you can say well maybe it's time for your body to let go completely and relax totally your body just follows it's all right the end of a day, a very physical day that you may experience in the past, where you get home and you just sit down in a chair, maybe you kick your shoes off and that, oh, it feels so nice, knowing that you don't have to get up again for a little while at least, and if you choose, you can just sit down for maybe an hour. Feels blissful. And just by sitting there like that, your body knows that it's time to relax. Your body has been given permission from you. Because it's a mindset. And your mind will prepare. evaporate and the tensions can just 
Because that sense of relaxation in the body is a very natural state. It's not something unusual. It may feel unusual when you first start to relax if you probably haven't really spent a lot of time focusing and giving yourself this space to let go completely and relax and it's seeming almost alien. It isn't. It's actually the most natural thing in the world to let go completely, to relax totally. The most natural thing in the world to allow yourself to feel. Is almost like a literal unwinding. To allow you to press a button and all the tension just releases. And it's like a wheel, like a cog, like the inside of a clock just unwinding. And you just almost like you can see the the little wind up knob that's used just going the opposite way that it was used to wind it up. All the energy, that frenetic, stressful energy gradually winding down, losing its power, losing its strength. As the sense of relaxation becomes stronger and deeper, stop listening to me for a while and your mind goes somewhere else and then you realize you're listening to me again and then it's just your mind drifting to sleep which is quite natural because sometimes when you're stressed you're not actually doing a real reflecting mind like your physical emotional mind in this moment but when you allow your body and mind to relax completely and you let go of all thoughts concerns worries It's, it's full, it's so nice, 
Star, focusing on firstly how you feel in your body, not trying to change how you feel, not trying to relax, not trying to move away from any discomfort or stress or tension, but just accepting, observing and accepting how you feel different parts of your body, just allowing yourself to be exactly as you are, to notice, to get in touch with how you actually feel in the 
expand. So we'll start off by focusing on the hands. Just be aware of the hands. I'd like you to move your hands around. Just maybe they blend into a little bit. kind of an equivalent with your feet is you've just done with your hands maybe turning your ankles moving your feet around and then you can return gently but when you very gently Focusing now on your eyes, I'd like you to just focus on your eyelids, maybe you can open and close your eyes a couple of times to really get in touch with how you feel when you do close your eyes, the muscle changes. up the eyes just so you can really get in touch with the inner aspects of how your eyes feel right now and now focusing Gently tense your thighs, just very, very gently, just enough so you can become more attuned to the physical sensation. muscles that are caught in the ear to the side of your neck and also lead to the top of your back, the joints and shoulders. And as you playfully slide on the back of your neck, maybe you can move your head gently upwards as if you're looking up. Maybe you 
whatsoever that I do in this is just so beautiful. Being aware of a sense of how your upper arms are free in this Thank you. 
series of some movies and some japan and some san francisco silence of my thoughts i can physically
everything starts to slow down. Including the thoughts in your mind and your mind itself just starts to gradually it doesn't have to be instant but just gradually starting to it's almost like time is stretching it's a slower pace to maybe what you're used to in your day to day life it's a slower movements, which are always the case, and when you move your hand, it might seem like it's one movement, but it's lots of minute different muscles moving in accordance with each other. What happens in this space that we're sharing is we move from that big movement into those smaller Starting to focus on how your body feels, not just as a whole, not just, oh, I'm feeling this way, I'm feeling stressed or tense or I'm feeling relaxed and calm, I'm feeling this way or I'm feeling that way. Starting to notice that your body begins to present to you small feelings around your body. Small physical sensations. pleasurable or not. And maybe resisting the temptation to label them or to judge them, those feelings of just thinking and thinking about them as just being neutral. Just feelings. concerned but just noticing what your body is telling you feelings in your arms instead of feeling the whole of the arm maybe notice those individual feelings all those different muscles and the skin the hairs of your arms the all the internal parts of your arms the veins Just 
being aware of maybe your elbow on your right arm has a certain fever maybe your left wrist also has the same individual physical sensation forearm and your right arm, your right forearm, there may not be any particular feeling that you could even give a name to, it may not feel like anything other than just it's there. The feelings in your shoulders. Perhaps your shoulders, when you think about them, it's kind of almost like they're the same, you know, the same feeling. It's almost like your both of your shoulders are just one thing. They're also not. Focus on your left shoulder and then on your right shoulder. Maybe you find that you move the muscles a little bit. You can tense the muscles gently. Noticing the difference. side of your lower back. You could all set a connection to your buttocks and to your hips. And also moving up into the middle of the back. Sometimes, like right now actually, when I focus on that part, when I focused on my buttocks, and when I focused on my the middle of my back, it almost felt like the muscles in my lower back were being stretched very gently. seemed to happen, the feeling of very gently stretching your lower back. Hands along. chest. Just noticing what sensations you are experiencing in your chest.
so much of the chest, obviously there's the collarbone leading to the chest, you've got the chest bone, you've got the muscles in the chest, and of course if you're female there's possibly the breasts, if you're male I might not act different these days, but there may be more muscles at the top of the chest, but at the side underneath, pretty much the same, whether you're a man or a woman, got the muscles there, muscles that stretch out to your back as well as breast tissue that stretches and moves into your back. So just being aware of your chest. Being with whatever feeling there is in your chest. And when I notice that I focus on my chest, I feel it in my my back, my upper back. I guess the obvious reason would be in case of my breathing. But you know, when it stretches my chest and my back at the same time, then it feels, it feels okay. bit of pain in my right chest, a little bit, not pain, but a little discomfort, maybe stiffness possibly, I don't know, I notice my shoulders are also working to flex for some reason, that's probably part of my upper back. That connection between my shoulders and my upper back. So I can move my shoulders and stretch the muscles in my back. Moving the shoulders backwards or up, which then moves the, I think it's the scapulas back. It looks quite nice actually. The good thing about this is you can, if you want to, you can just various muscles in your body gently in order to get more of a sense of how they feel. And when you're relaxing, when you do tense a muscle, to do that, and if you aren't doing it, there's 
to uh, make sure you're prepared to help everybody. You need to be gentle with yourself. started this recording. How calm, how peaceful. nothing to think about, and just my voice to listen to, because you know the intention behind this recording is relaxation, at the very least for you to feel more relaxed at the end of the recording than did at the beginning. At the very least. For your mind to slow down. As your body body. Maybe calming your mind to the point of boredom. When you start maybe to Sends the mind far away from the spaceship. So slow. And continue. 